Good evening and welcome to this September 14th, 2015 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please take the roll? Ms. Oglis? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you. And uh, just a quick note that uh, with all board members present, Ms. Oglis and Mr. Bealey will both be alternates this evening for voting purposes. Next item is approval of the minutes from the October 24th, 2015 meeting. Motion to approve the minutes. Discussion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous with one abstention. Thank you. Um, three quick housekeeping notes about agenda items. We have three items this evening which have been tabled at the request of the applicants. Um, item number five, Frank Marston requesting site plan amendment review for 55 Spring Street, Assessor's Map R37, Lot 26. Item number 11, Kenneth, Kenneth Grondon requesting Shoreland Zone approval for 299 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R35, Lot 9D. And number 12, Comfort Keepers requesting a site plan review for amendments to 253 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U43, Lot 3. Again, those have all been tabled at the request of the applicants. Next item on our agenda will be a public hearing on proposed amendments to Chapter 405, the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, to establish a small batch processing facility, use and definition, performance standards, and the zoning districts in which to allow these facilities. Now we have a presentation from Karen Martin from SEDCO, and would you like to introduce this one? Yes, please. Again, my name is Karen Martin. I'm the director of the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And I'm here tonight on behalf of Dan Bacon and the Long Range Planning Committee and the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And we want to bring you which is uh, the second in a series of two amendments to the zoning ordinance that really deals with um, what we're calling small batch processing. And this discussion, the, the term small batch processing, really came out of some of our discussions um, with regard to looking at food production companies. And what we were looking at originally was food production companies in some of the commercial zones. We're thinking of the very small folks who are doing jams and jellies, and maybe they need a 1,000 square feet. They're really doing their production on site, um, making small batches, and really not having a significant impact with regard to parking or the traditional things that you would con be concerned about with an industrial use, which is where they would be categorized in the current ordinance. So in looking at that, we felt like in some of the commercial zones that really could accommodate them, as long as we were limiting them in size and we're talking about certain performance standards <coughs> that we have to meet, but in addition to some of the food production uses, we realized that there are a whole host of um, smaller companies that might be jewelry makers or dressmakers, um, that ilk of business, who if you read the, you know, the ordinance in specifics, they would really be required to be in the industrial zone. And we felt like really those guys could be accommodated in some of our commercial zones. Um, particularly in um, the B2, the B3, some of the uh, mixed-use zones as well. And that's really where this came from. Came from. It was a, um, an attempt to make it easier for some of these smaller companies to locate in different areas of town, allow them to have more choice in their commercial um, land development, and also have more choice, I think, for some of the um, commercial areas in terms of the types of uses that could that could locate there. It seemed to be a really good fit. Um, and that's really what this amendment does tonight. One, it it looks at a definition of small batch processing. And we try to um, look at it in terms of both it's a process that has some element of hand design or hand processing um, or hand development. It is of a 
use that would make something from start to finish. It's not piecemeal. It's not um, making something for another industrial use. So we felt like we could really define it in that way, and we would, we would be able to um, use that definition of small batch processing. We've also added the performance standards that um, we've talked about before with respect to noise and compatibility. Um, you know, the, we're not looking at a use that, could, that would be needing to have a um, FedEx delivery every 10 minutes. Um, we really do want it to be compatible with the surrounding uses. And that's really the, the quality of um, the ordinance changes that we're talking about. And I will give you some uh, specific examples, too. There are some uh, businesses within town that uh, came to us after we started discussing this and basically are saying, well, you know, but for this change, we would have to be looking at other places to locate because they couldn't do what they wanted to do um, at their existing site. So we're very pleased that, you know, in our efforts to look at where companies are and what types of uses are being developed in today's economy, that we're perhaps one step ahead of, you know, uh, being able to accommodate uh, some new development and some smaller scale development that I think really makes a lot of sense for Scarborough. Um, with that, I think I'll just stop and see if there are questions, and I can clarify if need be. Thanks, Karen. Before we uh, take it up at the board level, uh, this is a public hearing, and so I'll open it up for any questions or comments. Just ask that you uh, provide your name and address and limit your comments to five minutes. I'll open the public hearing. Don't be shy. All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Susan, would you like to start us off? <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> this is another in a series of attempts by the Long Range Planning Committee, the um, Planning Department, and SEDCO to make sure that we're on the leading edge versus the back edge of what's happening when it comes to the needs of our business, professional, and commercial client, uh, present residents, present businesses, and those that want to come in. And we discovered, as uh, Karen just explained, that there really, wa there really is this growing need for places for people who are doing small batch user imagination. There's just so much of it out there, especially here in Maine. We do a lot of small business. And um, ha I think this is a wonderful idea, and um, I hope that the um, board and the council okays it. Thank you. Thank you. Roger, do you have anything? Uh, uh, just this, uh, I'm just glad that um, we're being proactive in this, and I think it's a good move. So I applaud the uh, various groups that were involved with this, and that's all I have. Thanks, Nick. And thank you. I, I too, think this is a great idea. I do have a couple questions. One is just out of sheer curiosity. Um, probably both are by sheer curiosity. Is, it, is there a process um, behind determining? So if somebody says, "I want to," I'm craft brewing, and um, is there a process, and who who makes that determination whether or not they fit into this definition? So we talked a lot about that when we were crafting this um, particular um, ordinance. So the way it's going to work is, number one, it does every, every instance where someone wants to do a small batch processing um, facility, whether it's, whether it's in an existing space or it's new, comes before the planning board. And what the planning board is going to do is look at that set of criteria and make that determination. So at this point, we're saying even if it's going into an existing space, it comes before the planning board. Um, we've talked about it, in fact, Dan and I talked about it today, whether or not um, you know, a, a streamlined form might be useful for applicants so they can really address those couple of standards that we've put in there. The other piece, and I know it's always a, a question, well, how each industry is different, and what we really believe is it's up to the applicant to tell us how their business is going to work and why they believe they fall under our concept of small batch processing. 
And for things like brewers and everybody's got a different standard. Um, in fact, the the um, uh, craft brewers have some very specific definitions about what brewing is. We considered, do we put those in the ordinance? And if we did that, we would start having to go to every uh, you know, uh, industrial group and ask what their standards are, and it begins to be a complicated ordinance. So we really wanted to put it back on the um, the applicant and say, tell us about your process and help the planning board make that decision about whether or not you're going to fit in with the neighborhood. Use your own standards, if you like, in terms of um, industry standards and how things are being made. Um, but will be the, the planning board is the final arbiter of whether or not they meet the standards. All right, thank you. And the language, um, did you grab this from another town or another city? Is combination of, mm -hmm. of both. We looked at ordinances across the country. Mm -hmm. um, small batch processing was something that was often um, referred to. And again, the difference between small batch processing and normal processing, you know, is that you make the product from start to finish. You're not piecemealing it, you're not doing a segment and then sending it someplace else. So that's part of it. Um, the words handcrafted or hand designed um, really is in a lot of ordinances across the country and we did pull that out, um, recognizing that there's a little ambiguity there, but I think there's enough there that when you're talking about design, the person working at the business is the one who's actually got their hands in the process and in the design of the product. Thank you. That's it. I'm, and I think this is a this is a good good piece to start with. Thanks. Thanks. Well, yeah, a couple of things. I find it interesting that you specifically picked on medical marijuana, since that that's an issue that will become an issue, I think, for every town, uh, and in the near future. And I'm all in favor of this. I mean, I I think that uh, this opens up all sorts of avenues. Uh, the potential uh, people and businesses coming into uh, Scabo, and I think we need that very much. Um, I will say it will be interesting if we have any of the microbreweries, though, that come in, and I have some connection to that situation. So, um, But they have very strict standards, to be honest with you, from scratch, beginning to end, and I, you know, I can go on for a long time about that. But And I'd love to see a microbrewery come into Scabo. Uh, and uh, this may be a format for us to uh, uh, facilitate that. Good job. Good job for the Long Range Planning Committee. Kudos to all you guys. Thanks. John? Uh, I'm actually agree with everybody. Good with this is great, great ordinance. I've got something to comment that's not necessarily for here, but maybe afterwards, anyone would comment on Section 4, page 2 regarding enforcement of odors and whatever. But it doesn't need to be discussed at this point. <coughs> I'm all for this. I think okay. we just need to... We're going to do this. We're going to put this sort of project in every particular area, but there's some odor issues that need to be addressed, so I'm not sure that the enforcement is strong enough to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't need to be dealt with with this particular piece. Of I'm happy with it. Thank you. Mike? Thank you. Um, yeah, I too am uh, generally in favor of this uh, proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance. And who can argue about, you know, having uh, small uh, small facilities being able to locate in areas in town that they currently can't. Um, I, I do find there is a fair amount of subjectivity, though, that comes through this ordinance. So, um, it's going to be interesting, I think, in that kind of a discussion where an applicant would come forward to the planning board, and and I just wonder how that discussion might go as far as whether planning board members will feel needing more more specifics in how to apply their judgment. Um, have you seen any cases where um, these kinds of ordinances have um, have been problematic or success stories, maybe? I I haven't. I have certainly seen some uh, success stories in other parts of the country, particularly there's so much research on the brewers right now. Um, so there is a, a, a lot there. Um, 
I do understand the concern about subjectivity, and we have, again, talked a lot about that um, in-house. And it, you know, it, it may be helpful to um, really look at some general policy guidelines in terms of uh, giving the applicants some better information about how to answer the questions. And that may be a step that um, staff really needs to, to do. We wanted to be extremely cautious this first time around um, in making sure that um, everyone who was going through this process, even if you're doing a tiny little bit in an existing building, that everybody has to come through and be reviewed by the body. So uh, we, are, we are aware of the subjectivity and, and then trying to be flexible. Uh, we err little on the subjectivity. Now, uh, maybe a question for Jay. Uh, um, how does this fit with uh, other ordinances as they relate, relate to small businesses, such as like home businesses? Would, would this only would this be only applicable to the zones that it that it speaks to? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. It's being applied to a number of the commercial existing <coughs> commercial districts. Okay. And uh, and I I have a, a a question on the medical marijuana. Um, exclusion. Uh, why why are we excluding that? And maybe for Jay also, do we have places in town that that processing uh, medical marijuana is allowed? Specifically codified for that? We, we do have places. It's been, um, and maybe Karen can speak to why it's excluded here, but it's been largely considered an allowed use in our industrial districts. Um, and so that's where it has been permitted to be down. Do we have, do we have uh, an ordinance that speaks to that? Um, that limits their... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in a position to speak to the specifics, mm -hmm. but I believe it's been classified in the uh, use, uses allowed in the industrial district as sort of a manufacturing production. I believe that's what we've been classifying it as. And I know the town attorney had weighed in, the zoning administrator, planning director, uh, spent a lot of time uh, trying to figure out what this fits under, um, and so and that was the zone it was found to fit the use classification. As I said, I believe it's the production and manufacturing provision, and if I'm mistaken about that, maybe Karen can speak. I, I think <coughs> there, were, there was an abundance of caution with respect to the potential impacts of that particular industry. At least for now, we wanted to exclude it um, as we move forward with this. It could be reconsidered later. Right. Um, I, I guess I, I would only say that I would be more comfortable if if uh, if we had a strict definition of what medical marijuana is, mm -hmm. and, and then that definition makes it fit in the zones that it's allowed, as opposed to specifically uh, announcing in this uh, in, in, in this amendment that it's not allowed. Because of course we could we could mention many types of activities. Mm -hmm. I mean, why stop at this? I know that we all have a few on the tip of our tongues, so, so you know, I would prefer that it not be in, in the um, in the definition, if you will. Okay, not be excluded. Or yeah, well, just not be mentioned. Okay. And and the definition of medical marijuana, as the town defines it, would care it. would take care of where it would be allowed. Okay. Great comment. Let's Jay and Dan and I can look at that and see if. Okay. But thank you for your hard work. I, I, I do appreciate it, and it reads quite well. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for, for the comments. Um, I definitely support this as well. I um, had the opportunity to, to be involved with the with, um, formulation of this on the uh, on LERPIC, and um, as Karen indicated and, and Susan mentioned as well, it was, it was a very deliberate process, um, and I think hopefully resulted in what's a a proactive uh, but thoughtful ordinance. Um, I definitely hear some questions and concerns about, you know, the devil in some of the details in terms of enforcement and subjectivity and how it really works when the rubber hits the road. Um, I think that's kind of the nature of the beast when, when any time there's a new ordinance. Um, we've, we've gone through that in, a, in some different ways on, on the cell tower uh, front, and we've kind of been feeling our way through some of that, and I I like Karen's term abundance of caution. I think that applies to a lot of this. Um, and I think the I think in my opinion this strikes a good balance between being proactive and um, and 
fairly inclusionary, casting a wide net, and then we we'll sort of see um, we we'll sort of see how that how that goes and, and whether certain things might need to be revisited. But I think, for example, in an area like Haggis Parkway, this is a, you know, another example of something that um, hopefully creates opens the door to some more opportunities um, as as the town thinks about how to how to adjust the expectations and the goals there, and hopefully in a way that, that helps that area develop in a, in a positive way. So um, pretty clear collectively we have a we have overwhelming support here. And Susan, do you have anything else? I would like to just come back with one brief comment to the subjectivity issue. Um, this is one of my soapbox issues, so any chance I get to address this, I take it. I think that that's a lot of what's been going on in, in zoning in Scarborough, certainly, and other towns as well, is trying to leave um, room for people to get together and talk about what is the best way to do something. It started with the design standards, which if you remember were originally design guidelines because we wanted to get the input from the various people involved, and that's subjective. It really is a subjective thing, whether or not something fits the guidelines. You have to sort of have an agreement as to what the underlying desire is. And as long as the ordinance states what the goal is, then I think that the planning board, which is really going to be, which is why I'm bringing it up, hint, hint, it's our responsibility. It's going to be the responsibility of this board to figure out whether or not it fits the definition. So you know, I, th I think it makes our job interesting. It makes it not cookie cutter and it allows people to come in who might have some new and unique things to offer that just don't fit. Right. So thank you for the extra time. Thank you. And I think uh, along those lines, too, it's one of the challenges with these ordinances. And again, we've seen, I think we'll see it a little bit on the, with the cell towers as well, is that it's, it's difficult to, be, to, to try and capture everything in the ordinance when you're talking about changing technologies and standards and processes. So. Um, I think that's another argument for having having it be a little more open and subjective and not overly prescriptive. Um, and then we have the ability to to collectively deliberate on those things. So, again, clearly have unanimous support here. And Mike, uh, anything else? So, what's the process now? Does it go back to the council mm -hmm. with our it comments? Does, yes. So our, our comments will accompany. Correct. Okay. <coughs> and I, I I just have that one exception. I think that is a good comment. Thanks. So unless there are any other comments, we will move on. Move on. Yep. Again, item number five was tabled. Item number six on the agenda, Rosvera Brothers Construction Company requests final subdivision review for an amendment to the Thieber subdivision for the addition of seven new residential lots. Assessor's map R40, lot one. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, this is an item the board has previously seen a few times um, and has actually received its preliminary approval um, earlier in the summer. Uh, as noted, this is for a uh, subdivision in the R2 district. The applicant's going through the conservation subdivision design. Um, as noted, um, this applicant was actually before the board at your last meeting. Um, they've addressed a number of the concerns that were previously addressed and you will have received comments from planning staff as well as Order and Kern, um, the town's peer review engineer. Um, in essence, uh, I know at our last meeting there was some discussion about stormwater approach. The applicant has been in touch with our town engineer and uh, engineer from Order and Kern. Um, the, the general concept and direction of stormwater is, is going in the right path. There's some final details to be worked out, but we think those are items that can be readily handled um, if the board's comfortable as a condition of approval. The last meeting, there was some discussion about a landscape guarantee. The applicant's response indicates they're willing to uh, put forth that as part of the performance guarantee for the project. Um, let's see, we had also previously talked about, um, as board members will note, in conservation subdivision designs, typically try to maintain at least a 25 or at least a minimum 25 foot setback from the upland edge of a wetland. The applicant has requested, given sort of the uh, abundance of open space they have if, um, and some of the site characteristics, if there could be um, an overlap between the 25-foot setback and the 15-foot building setback on some of the lots. So areas would remain undisturbed, but on lot lines, 
um, and the board seem generally uh, acceptable of that approach. Staff just echoes our prior comment that there may be consideration doing some further hardscaping just in those areas to be sure that those areas are, are, are well delineated beyond the uh, standard no disturbed pins. Uh, the applicant has provided their DEP and Army Corps permits. Um, and staff did have a comment about uh, a, a note on the plan, um, but we have received a revised note from the applicant's engineer today and did have ample time to review that, and we're comfortable that that note has been adequately revised. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, staff has prepared a draft motion if the board is so inclined this evening. Um, and there would probably be at least one change to one of the conditions, again, should the board get there this evening. Thanks, yeah. Jay. I'll turn it over to Mr. Risbera. Good evening. I'm Rocky Risbera. Uh, Nancy St. Clair couldn't be with us tonight. Um, I don't have uh, a nice presentation like Nancy usually has, uh, but I will uh, echo Jay's comments. Uh, we've been before you. I think this is our fourth uh, time uh, at the planning board. We have had a site walk. Um, we think we have things in order for final approval tonight. Um, I would like to uh, address the one item that I think we do have outstanding, and that is some uh, stormwater details. And uh, we have met with the town engineer and gone over uh, some details. And we have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning at uh, tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock, I believe, or one thirty, to work out some final uh, details. But I think we're on board. Um, I've gone through the notes. Nancy has gone through the notes and feels very confidently that we're that we can meet uh, the requirements. And the town's engineer would like to. Like to see us meet. So, um, with that, I would uh, be happy to answer questions, and, and hopefully, could get a final approval tonight. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments at this stage? I'll just say I apologize for missing the last meeting, but um, so, uh, the hammer had changed, did it not? Did, was what? it going the other direction before? Uh, no. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. So I had it. I had it backwards. You missed two meetings? Did I miss the last two? No, <laughs> last one. Oh, oh right. It yeah. like we plowed Maybe. That it would appear so, right? <laughs> uh, but so the hammerhead did stay where it was uh, for various reasons. I'm trying to trying to remember what they were. But we, <laughs> we went through a bunch of iterations so on did. the way out. We did. And, that and was one not. of our original questions, and it wasn't possible. It, was, it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. It wasn't going to work. Okay. All right. So for the <coughs> it's fine. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm fine. Great project. Ron? I'm okay. Nick? No questions. All set. Susan? Of course. <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. I don't think it's a great project. I don't like all these wetlands being disturbed, and I, and I won't forever like it. But as I always say at this opportunity, <clears throat> with the ordinances as they are and with the land as it's given, this is a really good project. Is done the best that can be done to protect the wetlands, which is, of course, my primary concern. Um, I'm sure, because the thing is that we always know where to find Rocky. You know, if, it, if it doesn't work out right, we know where to find him, so it works for me. I do have a question when it comes to um, making a draft motion, but shall I reserve my question until we do that? Go ahead. Well, it, under conditions, it talks about no disturbed wetland setback delineation. Do we need to spell out what we mean by that? Because there was discussion about the fact that there was some, we wanted some hardscape features, such as, um, as the staff comments, slip rail fence to further reduce chances of encroachment. And I guess that was the question staff had. Is that something the board's interested okay, in? So well far, I haven't heard that that is. So. Well, that's one of the things I would like to request, is that the delineation, and if it has to be put in the conditions, that's fine, but the no disturbed wetland setback delineation, and I don't know how to word this. We have to decide what kind of hardscape feature we want, or can we just... Why don't we ask the applicant? Could I, could I address that? <laughs> why don't we ask so the applicant? Our plan is to address it with some buffer pins in, in areas where it made sense me that we ought to have some pins. I personally feel like, as a contractor on the job, people pay more attention to pins, and I know that there are other people who have other ideas, but um, there will be some buffer pins in along the back of where this house is, over in here where the buffer kind of comes up into the lot. 
Well, are we concerned only with encroachment from development, or are we also in, in concerned about encroachment of people who own houses encroaching upon the use of the wetlands around them? I mean, that's a question that I'm asking staff. Yeah, I think generally it's more the long term, because certainly, as you just noted, when the developer goes in, one of the things that we've begun working with developers on is being sure that um, uh, before construction begins that we're delineating those with something that's highly visible, um, you know, whether that's orange snow fencing, something that's yes, pretty that's temporary till those final pins go in. But we have seen instances where the pins um, you know, our so we're not concerned about delineating this in order to keep somebody in, who has a residence from overstepping their bounds into the wetlands. I would say that's the principal concern. Okay. Um, I think we have more control over because, a developer. Cause because pins, for me, aren't going to do that, right? We need something in the term, in, in, I mean, sorry. What, you, you feel as if no one's going to be down in there? Is that why? No, I feel like if there are some buffer pins that delineating that, then someone's going to see that iron pin and know, they're at least going to ask, all right, what does that mean? If they refer back to their plan, they're going to see right on the plan, it's clearly shown. <laughs> Jay had talked about, you know, some rocks or some fencing or whatnot. I mean, I really don't want to fence the entire open space off. I don't think it's warranted. I, I thought that if we concentrated on some areas that looked kind of like an obvious place where someone might want to try to encroach, that that would be adequate. And, I think um, and again, I thought pins would, would work, but if we well, could do some pieces of fence or... Yeah, and I think you know, uh, Mr. Isbear sort of talked about it. There, it's not the full length, because there actually isn't sort of the crossover, if you will, of the, of the wetland setback onto lots for the full back length of all those lots, it's just certain areas of uh, where where the lot becomes tight, uh, particularly in some areas where the applicant has, has okay, provided at least yeah. rudimentary um, grading plans for the lots. There are some areas that really become quite tight against that setback. Um, and again, during the construction phase, if Mr. Bear's company is out there, we have a high level of confidence, if, but once his crew leaves... That would be good. Um, That's my, that is my concern. It's in those areas that you pointed out. It's not going all the way along. Over yeah, here. right. And we've got areas where it crosses onto the lot, but it should be back and forth. Well, clear back. that's right. To me, it's, there's a couple of mm -hmm. points that I think I think we're on the same page some, here. That's I think I some iron point. buffer pins would work if you wanted to. I guess we could put a few landscape rocks in. I'm not sure a fence really is the right right thing. A to landscape have. rock. I can just see it. Are you a landscape rock? A, a rock that you can use for landscaping. You know, that's great. <coughs> that's great. I just know encroachment happens, and if nothing else, you can take somebody out and say, see those rocks, and you're going to get it on your, on your um, when you get your lot registered, it'll show that these are not to be touched. So, And that's something that I do. I make sure that my buyers have a copy of the right. subdivision plan. I know. Well, not everybody does that, but, but, but if we they have do to remember open the plan, is, they can. They but will this see is all planning is. board, and you can only plan for the person who's buying that house. And I'm concerned about what's going to happen after the house is turned over. So I don't want to make a big deal about this, but I would personally like to see that changed when we get to the. Um, and, so, and so at this point, staff drafted a condition that talks about having the plans revised to. Um, delineate the wetland setbacks in accordance with staff staff comments. Now, if the board <coughs> wants to leave it open for staff and the applicant to work through, you know, is it a stone, is it split rail fence, is it so, yeah. so I guess that's the question for the board. If you're interested in something specific, let us know now. We'll write that into the condition. If you're o more open to allowing staff and the applicant to work through that, as a condition, oh, yeah. then I think... I don't want to talk about one stone being right and one stone not right. being right. So, no. so the way the way staff <laughs> intended this condition be framed was that to address the issue and to sort of have the details be ironed out um, outside of the board's um, meeting. But again, if the board's more interested in delving deeper, we can do that as well. Including hardscaping or something, okay? Yep. I don't, just, just to leave the door open for me. All okay. Right. That's my only problem. Other than that, we've worked long and hard together and separately, and let's go for it. Thank you. Uh, that was really going to be my only question or 
point of discussion was whether you were amenable to doing that at, at, those, at those points. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, beyond that, it's obviously been really well vetted at this point. Um, I'll say again, as I think I said last time, you guys were here, I think the site visit, site walk was very helpful. And um, you know, it's taken a few iterations and, and meetings, but I think we're ending up with a pretty good outcome. And um, I think with that, I will put this motion forward. <coughs> Excuse me. I move to approve the application of Rosbera Brothers Construction Company, Inc., mm -hmm. under Chapter 406, the Town of Scarborough Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan for the Verge subdivision with the following findings, waiver, and conditions. Findings, as stated in the record, I will not burden you with reading those out loud. Uh, the one waiver, the board agreed to waive the nitrate plume analysis due to significant distance from any existing wells and that the subdivision lots are to be, are to be served by public water. Conditions. The subdivision shall be constructed in accordance with the subdivision plans titled Second Amended Subdivision Plan of the Burge Recording Flat as prepared by St. Clair Associates dated October 31, 2015 to be revised. The plan sheets are to be revised in accordance with the comments raised by staff and peer reviewers to address A, stormwater design and technical details, and B, no disturb wetland setback delineation to include hardscape feature. Revised sheets are to be reviewed and approved by planning staff prior to board signature. That's the motion. Uh, there's another second. Not the motion, the there's more. <laughs> can read this more. Double sided printing. <laughs> second condition is prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees. B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure man management ordinance. Number three, a recreation contribution in the amount of $500 shall be paid on a lot-by-lot -lot basis prior to the issuance of a building permit. And number four, prior to the start of construction, the no disturbed setback area shall be clearly delineated in coordination with town staff. Mr. Chair, before you call for a second, can I offer a slight adjustment to one of these conditions? And um, I apologize. I wrote this earlier in the afternoon. As I mentioned, we received a, a uh, revision to the plan note that <coughs> is really the only item on the recording plat that we were concerned with. So condition number one, um, I would agree that all the first paragraph in A and B uh, remain. And then I'd just say, um, revised sheets to be reviewed and approved prior to release of the recording plat um, or re prior to the release of the signed plan uh, for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds rather than by signature of the board because I do believe the plans are ready for signature tonight. So um, if you're amenable to that. And yeah, I have a question. Was there an easement that was supposed to be part of this too? There will be easements that will be Typically, those are done as part of the construction package and before the town accepts any um, the infrastructure, so this is going to become a public road. So, yes, there are a host of easements, frankly. <laughs> so those will all be addressed. So, Corey, you want to put that forward as an amendment to the motion? I don't know that we needed an, no? an amendment because we didn't have a second yet. Well, you have but a second on the main motion? I jumped the main motion. before the second. Jay jumped in there. <laughs> I'll second the main motion. All right. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Item number seven, Verizon Wireless requests a final site plan review for a transmission tower at 239 Broad Turn Road, Assessor's Map R24, Lot 6. Okay. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, as just noted, this is an um, application for Verizon Wireless. They're seeking to locate a new transmission tower in the RF district, which is also uh, in our transmission tower overlay district. Um, as board members will note, this item was before you um, previously, I believe it was back in uh, June and August of this year. 
Um, as part of the review process, the board is really, there's sort of three steps in the review process. One is to go through a priority of location um, process to ensure that the, locate, the proposed location of the tower sort of meets the objectives for um, providing coverage to the town while limiting the, essentially trying to limit the number of towers that are uh, required to do that in town. Um, basically, it, it appeared during the board's discussion in early August that the board was generally satisfied that the applicant had addressed those criteria. The other two steps uh, are with regards to the performance standards for transmission towers, which are spelled out in that transmission tower overlay district of the zoning order, <coughs> as well as site plan review ordinance provisions. Um, so, um, let's see, in essence, so staff has provided some comments in regards to those. Winter and Kern has also reviewed um, the materials and provided a memo. Um, in reviewing what the applicants provide to date, really there seems to be sort of a key issue at, at, uh, before the board tonight in terms of considering the height and style of the tower um, and really providing firm guidance for the, the, um, the applicant and staff and board town <laughs> as this project move, moves forward. Essentially, the applicant, through their materials, is proposing a 120-foot tower that's really aimed at serving the needs of Verizon while aiming to address the visual impacts and buffering components of the ordinar ordinance. Um, however, the, the co-location justification really appears to be dependent upon future applications and what, what might be needed there. So really in that light, and this is where, um, again, we really need the board's direction, is understanding that um, are the needs expressed by the applicant satisfy those performance standards set forth, or does the board feel that um, there's additional information that could be or should be provided to address um, what future co-location might look like with the tower? Um, again, since the board last saw this, they had previously proposed a monopole there was some discussion at your last meeting about a monopine, monopole. The applicant is now before you with a proposal for a monopine. Uh, at the board's request, they have looked at the ability to extend a monopine, and they provide some evidence uh, in that regards. Um, so that really seems to be the critical issue. Uh, staff does have some other comments with regards to buffering. Um, there had been some discussion about ensuring uh, uh, this development wouldn't impact potential future connectivity or development of the overall lot. Um, and the applicant mm -hmm. has provided a concept plan in that regards. Um, so I guess with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And uh, I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Hi. Uh, my name is Kelly Bowden. I'm at Feral Dana. My colleague, Scott Anderson, whom you met with before, has a conflict this evening. So um, Chip and I work closely together, and I was here during the ordinance development stage, so I'm familiar with process from the beginning and hopefully the end of this one anyway. Um, so Jay's comments um, are correct. I think we're looking for direction hopefully to get to a final approval in terms of which um, tower you're looking for in this site and at what height. So I'll let you speak to the specifics and I guess we would look for questions. Um, I think you've been through the concepts several times now and um, he has the benefit of having been to all of those meetings. So. Yeah, hi, folks. Uh, Chip Perdette here again on behalf of Verizon Wireless. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think at this point, uh, certainly look to you for guidance and direction on what the board thought it preferred uh, regarding tower type and, of course, height. Again, our application is only for 120 feet. Uh, we understand that the ordinance gives the planning board the ability to uh, approve something taller, uh, and certainly we can design the foundation and tower itself whether it's a monopine or a monopole, regardless of tower type, it can be designed by us to be extendable to 150 feet. So um, we don't show future tenancy on the elevation view of the site plan, uh, mainly because we don't know what height you're looking for. Uh, if you were looking for that tower to be extendable from 120 to 150, I would show you uh, on that plan our antenna array at 120 as it's shown today, but then also a shadowed sort of look uh, extended up to 150 with future tenancy going up from there. If the board decided, hey, uh, we, we really don't want the extension, we'd rather just work with 120 feet and, and lower, I would present to you an elevation view where, again, we're at 120, and then those future three tenants, carriers, 
would be down below. Again, 10 foot of separation industry standard, so if we're 120, then 110, 190. So um, I, I really throw it back in your court to give us some guidance, and we'll do, again, as, as, as you like. Same goes with the fence compound itself. Um, a lot of this stuff is, these are all design parameters that, by which you typically uh, you know, weigh in on anyhow. So we're happy to, happy to oblige. Thank you. Would you like to take the first crack at this? <clears throat> um, you know, we've seen this quite a few times already, and uh, I think, you know, as far as providing you guys with some guidance, um, my preference is to have a pad that supports a 150-foot uh, pole and um, your construction height be the, the 120 you, you need. Um, I would prefer to see any future application or co-location come here and give us the good reason to go and extend it. also gives us the opportunity to kind of grasp the visual impact of the 120 before we get up to the 150, so right. if, if that ever came to it. That's about it for my comments tonight. Okay. Nick, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Do you want the 150 or the 120? I want the pad to be able to support a 150, but I actually want the pole to be 120. To thank start. you. Yeah. Thank you. Roger? Uh, thank you. Um, I would agree uh, also with that. Um, it's important that we have the um, capability of handling the other carriers. Yep. Now, when um, AT&T was before us, they had indicated that Verizon was going to co-locate with them on their, on their tower. Yeah, Mariner. Mariner. Ma yeah. Mariner's in yeah. front of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Mariner's, any, Mariner's a tower owner, and AT&T would have been the uh, anchor tenant. Right. 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 Now, has any uh, has AT&T or anybody else approached you folks yet? Not, not for this. Okay. No. Do you right at 120? Mm. Do you have any sense whether they would be able to co-locate? You know, Bel 10 feet below right below now, us? and, and have any kind of signal? I don't. So, yeah, I don't want to pretend to mm -hmm. know their design. So, so if if you put that up right away, mm. and uh, almost immediately somebody else comes along and they want to co-locate on that. I mean, does, does this become a big project to do this? Or? No, in fact, uh, so let, let, let's play it out. Uh, we're approved for a 120-foot pole that's extendable to 150. Uh, oh, we build it next spring, AT&T. Guy comes around, hey, look, that site was built over on the Carter property. We're interested in co-locating on it. The first thing uh, that real estate agent's going to do is going to go back to their engineer and say, well, look, um, so here are the two options. One, we can go at 110 uh, with the building permit only, or if you do need that, need additional height, you have to go back in front of the planning board with an application. So um, it, could, it could go either way. Mm -hmm. um, my guess is that, that, you know, that site acquisition agent who's in my shoes is going to be pushing for the 110 feet. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it'll be up to them to decide at that time, so. Um, <coughs> regarding the monopine versus the monopole, yep. um, personally, I don't have any preference one or the, one okay. or the other. I'm just kind of curious. Um, in the business, in your in your uh, experience, have you had complaints from uh, criticism from uh, people when the monopine has been put up? Because I've heard people ridicule it because it looks so out of place. Yeah. Again, site specific, right? So. I've heard both, um, and it depends on the siting. You can you can build a 180 foot monopine. Uh, I'll, again, I'll use the I don't know if you recall, but I use the example in Canterbury, New Hampshire. We did a uh, I was working for a different company at the time, but we built a 180 foot monopine. And for my 93, it's obviously a 180 foot monopine. <laughs> but but from Canterbury, from town, from all those apple orchards and all those horse farms, it when you have that amazing westerly view. You're looking out overnight, you can't see 90 feet, look in the west of the direction. It just, in some of those, from those vantage points, it just peaks up above, looks like a bull pine. It doesn't stand up as tall as, it's not 180 feet because you're a completely different location. It's all, it's all vantage points, uh, you know, dependent. So, at, 100, at 150 feet, will this, you know, uh, will it stand out? We've done, we've done the photo sims. Um, uh, I don't think it's terrible. I think at 150 feet, uh, if it were me, I would probably pick a monopole and leave it a, leave it a monopole. Um, at 120 feet, the monopine looks great. So it's and, and um, Verizon doesn't care one way or the other which one it is. 
performance um, standards are the same. Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, from a, from a technical sta technical standpoint, yeah, the performance is, is all the same to us. Okay. Yep. All right. I have nothing further. Thanks, Roger. Susan. I agree um, with both of those assessments. Um, I would definitely think we want to be have the ability for it to go to 150 feet. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be constructed with all of that in mind. Yep. Um, if they want to go lower, I can't imagine it, but it could probably happen. Yeah. Um, as for the model, I'm not sure why you change, but I haven't changed my opinion in that a pole is a pole is a pole. It's a cell phone tower. We're going to try to keep it in as much of, a, of an area and of a height as we can, but, you know, I'm sorry. Putting a bunch of greens on it doesn't make it anything but just silly. So I definitely go for the pole and not the pine. Less mass. Yeah. yeah, much less mass. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And just to just to recap, I don't know that I'm totally clear on <coughs> where Nick and Roger stand on pine versus pole. I I personally do not offer an opinion. Um, <laughs> don't have to. <laughs> I will say this: I do have a very strong opinion on this. If it's gonna be pine, <laughs> it better not look like that. That's a that's an issue. What is if, it? If, if, <laughs> if you have a choice of the the Charlie, leaves, Charlie it should Brown, look like Charlie Brown that. Bowl. Yeah. Charlie Brown Bowl, right? That that, that <laughs> being said, yeah, I don't want Charlie Brown Christmas tree <laughs> hanging the there. Um, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, on, I mean, I wish we had some sort of straw poll of area residents because, you know, quite frankly, I'm not going to be looking at this as frequently as they would, and I would, I would rather have the people that have to look at it make that decision. Since I cannot, um, I'm going to rely on the experience of some of my board members here to, to steer the direction, as long as it does not look like this. Whatever that that's is. Under. Keep in mind that photo is taken from inside the compound, looking up the thing. So it's terrible. Yeah, that's it's cool. terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's my only opinion on appearance. Thank you, Roger. Did you? Well, on a, you're saying that this I'm photograph here the is spot. the same as this one here, only looking up. No, looking no, up no, no, no. I'm saying that that photo. That, those are two different sites, right? Right. Yeah. That photo was taken from the actual compound. So that's a vantage point on private property, whereas the other is a bit for the. And certainly, the other tree is a better product. I mean, it's like anything, you know. Is it a Chevy or a Cadillac? I mean, it's, yeah. See, the only thing I would say is, if you went with the monopine and that thing was to be 150 feet, they would always know the abutters. The abutters would know where they lived. Mm. <laughs> and I, I know I'm kind of putting folks on the spot a little bit, but I think you know the applicant's looking for some direction, and so to the extent that we have. Opinions. I just want to make sure we put them out there. I am pulling up the from the applicant's last submission in August. I'm pulling up their pictures of the mono pine that they superimposed, I believe, on the site. Is that I'm the 120 or the 150? I believe this is at 120. So the balloons we're looking at here, the red balloon is a 150 balloon, and the yellow is a 120 balloon. Correct. And then I believe we're going to see a mono pine that's sighted at the 120 height. Yep. So we don't, I don't believe you superimposed the mono pine at 150 because right. you were proposing a 120. Right. Um, so board members are going to have to use your imagination of what this might look like another 30 feet in height. So again, here's another view from, uh, this is from near 5 Carterbrook Drive. You can see the red, um, the yellow I can sort of pick out here, but again. That looks great. That's so that's, so that's 120 from that location. Um, this is from Nonsuch Road. Um, you can see the red circle. That's about all I can see from here as well. And you're seeing what I'm Not seeing. Visible. Right. Uh, through some trees from Holmes Road. Not a lot there. Um, what do we have here? Hayfield Trail, about uh, eight, eight tenths, nine tenths of a mile away. You can sort of see the balloon sort of see the arrows pointing anyway. And this is from Tibbetts Road. So again, the red is the 150. The tree we're seeing is at 120. Uh, so um, I think it starts to get, and this is on the site, so there Just we go. Just a quick comment to, to your your comment, Nick, about you know, it'd be nice to have a straw poll. Unfortunately, I, I think if we asked the residents, they would just say, we don't want one that we that we can see from our neighborhood at all. Mm. <laughs> it's the one we do we do have an email from a resident 
uh, Mr. Mark Eric Amaro, um, who had some concerns and sort of repeating some concerns that have been articulated before. I know everyone has a copy of this. Um, I don't want to believe that, but I did want to recognize that, and, and it is part of what makes this challenging is that it's a, sort of a new thing for us, and um, I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot of <laughs> outside help. Um, so we'll have to do our best. I, don't think, or, I, I think, unfortunately, for uh, Carter Brook, the way that development was <laughs> was uh, created, and uh, you know, basically, the, the, it appears to be a lot of clear. You know, clear cutting and just that was a gravel pit or something like that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, where this is going to be located, that really they're the ones who are really going to bear the front of uh, the visual impact. You know, as far as I can see, most of the places it's not going to have much of an impact at all. So, so you say just for my before we go on, <coughs> it, it, it's going to be much clearer from kind of book than it will be from Blood Turn Road and the people from on Blood Turn Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Hey, if you, Jay, if you, if you yeah. would, can you go back to the viewshed analysis and go to the map at the very front of the uh, package? Sure. Let's, let's look yeah, there you go. Um, just one page, another page for me. Good. All right. So again, recall, folks, this is a drive map that we did when viewing those balloons. All the roads that are highlighted in green to uh, a little bit. are roads that we drove, uh, and the balloon is the balloons were not visible from those locations. Where the balloon was visible, the road is highlighted in red, and you really get to zoom in on X marks the spot to see those sections of roadway where the balloon would be visible. And it's really adjacent to the site. Uh, and again, the red dots, different from the red lines, which actually start and stop the viewpoint. If he saw the balloon, he start, he click, he would he GPS that section of roadway and stop, and then take a photograph at the most obvious point along that roadway. So, you know. At 100 and, at 120 feet, um, there's a lot of green and not a lot of red. So, um. <coughs> Ron? Yeah, look, I want to just follow up on what you were saying. We did have a comment from somebody that lives on Carter Brook. There were no comments. You haven't heard any feedback from anybody else besides no. nobody has said anything. When the board, I, I just do want to make note that when the board did open it for public comment, there were a couple of abutters who do live along Broad Turn. Yes, Broad Turn. That did come um, and, and speak to the board. Right. Um, so I just want to be sure that that's uh, noted and remind the board that we have heard other comments. Do you have this on you? Is this a, I'm sorry, yeah, but is this a gravel area or is that at home? So me, uh, Bill Grant Grondon is a contractor, I know that. Yep, so, so Carter Brook, um, so that's the end of Carter Brook. That is now open space as part of the Carter Brook subdivision. So what you're seeing are the lots coming down. The um, see, some board members may have been on the board when Carter Brook subdivision was extended. Originally stopped just about here, I'm, um, if you can see where my... Mouses, mm -hmm. and then the board approved six or seven new lots with the extension, and then this is a large open space. But yes, all this area was all a um, gravel pit, so it's been cleared, um, largely devoid of trees. Um, same with uh, the Carter property is also a pit, an active pit. There are some trees. There's a stream uh, or ravine that runs sort of where I'm running the mouse right now on the Carter property where there's trees. Mm -hmm. There's a significant stand of trees <coughs> sort of on the uh, Broad Turn and Holmes Road uh, boundaries as well. Um, and those are sort of the, when we were going through the visual, um, you may remember here if we come back to this picture from Carter Brook. Sorry, I need to zoom out. Just give me a moment. Uh, so you'll see these the trees, I want to go one more, I believe. So the trees that are before the monopine, these are the trees that are actually on the Carter property. Um, so you can see all this clear area is, lar is, is, on the, is in the open space of the Carter Brook Drive subdivision. And then the property line to the Carter, I know it's still getting a little complicated with the same name here, but the Carter Excavation Pit, the subject property we're talking about, um, the property line is somewhere probably about a third of the way into this field that we're looking at. And then 
um, the trees pick up along that ravine I was previously trying to depict with the mouse. Hopefully that all made sense. Let's not. <laughs> ravine goes here, yeah. and so there's some trees around it here. Okay. And which in the that's excavation area. That's all I largely see. cleared. And let's see if I can find you an aerial photo. I just want to make sure there's enough buffering. That's where I'm going with all this in my own mind. I mean, I, I understand that it was... a quarry of some type that was clear-cutted and the subdivision was put in there. Mr. Mazur, if you'll turn your attention up to the screen again. Mm -hmm. So here is the, the red line. This number one is essentially the end of the... Carter Brook subdivision road and where those lots are those with that extension. Uh -huh. This is all part of the open space. And then the property line, I could, I'm certainly off, but is generally in the area I'm running the little mouse. Can you see that? Yeah. Generally the property line's there, so some of this open space is, or cleared area I should call it, is on the Carter subject property. Then you have these trees. That's those trees are the, a buffer to a ravine or a stream that runs through there. <coughs> and then you can see again where it clears out where the, currently the active excavation work on the Carter subject property where the towers to be proposed or is proposed is being worked currently. Um, so hopefully that. That makes it better. Um, I, uh, my two cents, I, 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 I want the, I, I think the, Mono pine, nicely done. I, I, I mean, I can go either way to be honest with you, but I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the average person looking out, and do I want to look at a, just a pole? And I, I agree with Susan. A pole is a pole is a pole, but do do I want to look at a pole or do I want to look something half decent? And I think I lean in the direction of a nicely done mono pine. Um, so that would be my my two cents. And then there's something else I want to say. I respect, I always respect uh, any comments that we get from the public. And I take things seriously, and I certainly, as you're hearing, don't pretend to be an expert uh, on telecommunications. And I'm trying to learn as a lot like a lot of other people uh, and uh, try to give my best input as a member on this board as other members who work very diligently in coming up with whatever conclusion, good, bad, or indifferent. But any time anybody throws at me before we've gone through the whole process, either implied or direct lawsuits, I get a tough time with that. And uh, I, I really have a hard time when somebody tries to hold that over, over my head. And uh, knowing how hard this board and myself work to come to the right conclusions. Uh, and I just want that for the record. And, uh, uh, and again, I respect every input, whether it's in letter form, email form, or in person. Uh, but I don't like any sort of threat I, until we've gone through a whole process and then it's up to whomever to do whatever they want to do. Just needed that for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, just one, thanks for that comment, but one follow-up question. Did you um, have a preference on the on the height uh, to depict the 120? I, 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 I'm going to go along with Nick. I think the 120 would be, would be right. okay. Thank you. John? I agree with Nick on the 150-foot uh, foundation for a possible 150. I'm sure <laughs> nobody wants to see this come before us again for another 30 feet, but I think uh, 120 foot is fine. Uh, the monopine uh, looks fine in most circumstances. The one you're showing in Limington uh, actually looks great from Limington except for one point. I used to live in Standish. Yep. yep. You're down 25 by Steep Falls Lumber. You yep. look out across the hill, and the only thing that's sticking in the air is that monopine. Right. So there's some particular areas it doesn't look good, but most places it looks fine. And I'm going to agree with Ron and make a comment about uh, I respect citizens' comments, but we spent a lot of time working on this cell phone issue and ordinance, and for somebody to say there was no public notice, 
well, you need to look at the town website because everything is there every week on what's going on. So if you're really concerned on what's happening in this town, you need to look at that. So for you to tell us that we're not being open is totally wrong, and I'm upset with it. So look at your town website and see what's going on in town. You could have had a lot of boys in this whole ordinance a year ago, or more than a year ago, when this started. Enough said, I'm all done. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Corey. <coughs> um, the pictures that you provided, can you tell me what that's showing me? Yeah, yeah, that's a tape drop, as we call it. So uh, uh, when the contractor is finished building the site, uh, as part of one of the requirements of constructing a variety, any power site, for that matter, they do what's called a tape drop. They simply verify and photograph for the record the actual top of tower. I see. Okay. It's a big deal when it comes to federal regulatory. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think the applicant has done well in meeting our ordinance and uh, has responded to our concerns. Uh, I'm in favor of approving the project. Um, I live I live across the street from a monopole. Okay. Um, but it's really not the monopole that I think most of us are, have been talking about today. It's it's literally a pole, and it has uh, its antennae is in is inside the pole. Okay. So um, it's it's advertised as as quite a large flagpole, but a, you know, it's got a ball on top, but the flag doesn't fly on it. Yeah. And when I look at that, you know, over the years, it sort of has been just become a part of the landscape, and it doesn't really cause any real hardship for me visually. Yeah. But I think it would be different if it had antenna on the outside of it. So for that reason, uh, if I was living, uh, I do live near Carterbrook, but I don't think I'll see this. But um, if, if, I, if this was across the street from me, I would rather it be a monopine as depicted in this kind of a picture here. Yep. Cause, and, and that brings me to at 120 feet. And that brings me to the next question is, uh, what is the z design going to be? I mean, we've had, we have some examples here, and we, I think we can all agree which ones were better than others. Yeah. Yeah. The design, so, if, you, if, if I had to see a peg one now, it would probably be closest resemble the Leamington, Leamington photograph in there. Um, right, right, but that's from a distance. But so thicker, yeah. Well, that's actually looking from no, no. Limington, the photo from Limington is actually the photograph I took from the actual driveway. So okay. you've got a blatant, obvious bore site view, looking at it. But that gives you the full 150 and it complement of the site, and it shows you that we bring the branches down to about 30 or 40 feet on, in elevation. Um, so you could you could count on that. The, the branches would start at about 30 or 40 feet and go all the way to the top. And that thicker greenery, not the not the lean looking. Uh, sorry, looking model that we, should, we looked at earlier. So, sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Can you uh, tell me when I get to before, the one. But oh, sorry. Yeah, Jay, go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. Well, be, but before you. Um, there right there. Yep. 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 But before construction begins, uh, is there going to be um, a process where your design is brought to the attention of the planning department for just a visual confirmation? Yes, that's the. That's the kind of uh, design that the board agreed to. Uh, well, we can show, we can, as a condition of approval, we can certainly uh, show on the plan. That, again, we haven't shown really much of anything, so we're waiting for you. So, right. so now that we have that, yes, we could say, uh, you know, use that as an example. Um, that design there uh, from the Limington Southwest site. Uh, that's 150 feet, actually, I believe, uh, and that was built as 150 to be just to be 150. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, we could do that, or it could be given to the code enforcement officer, wh whatever you you know. Well, whatever pleases the board. But I, okay. I see, I think Jay's kind of crafting maybe a, an amendment of sorts, or uh, I don't know. But crafting a thought. I, <laughs> I, I I I would I would uh, ask that 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 additional, if you want to call it additional process, be be employed okay. following final approval. Since we don't have, are we here for final approval tonight? Oh, I, I'm, I'm certainly going hoping so. I, well, well yeah. I, the, the intent of the applicant is to get final approval. So yeah. if we do find ourselves voting on it, I would want that additional mm -hmm. step okay. taken. That's all. Okay. So 120 feet mono pine and 150 uh, foot base is uh, certainly fine with me. You mentioned something about the fence. Was mm -hmm. there a debate about the fence? No, I think there was a bullet point in, in Jay's memo that talked about uh, us offering to you a black vinyl fence. Really, it's it's chain link with vinyl insert. Uh, it could be vinyl flat. It could be vinyl coated. 
I see. Typically, uh, the design standards seek for the vinyl coated, not the vinyl yeah, flat. Right. Um, well, I when I when I stockade, uh, you know. Well, on, on on that note, I would recommend a uh, a black vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, when I put a fence around um, a, my pool, mm -hmm. I use that black vinyl, and it, it certainly does disappear. Yeah. It's much better than the galvanized look, and I think better than the slats. It lasts longer. So th those would be my comments on the design. And uh, I do recall um, folks that were here a couple meetings ago commenting on this proposal. I know one, I believe, resident of Carter Brook subdivision said if, uh, if this must be constructed, he'd rather it be a mono pine. I just hadn't heard that uh, anyone remembered that, that opinion. I, but I, I do remember that. They were in, they were speaking. So, uh, we can just throw that in the hat, if thank you will. You. Okay. But thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so just to recap here briefly, uh, it sounds like we have. Yeah, sure. One quick. Go ahead. So if if you go to 120 right now, and I notice the mono pines have a kind of a cone shape to them, somebody comes and says we need the extra 10 feet. We're gonna. So the limbs get redone, so it maintains. Okay. Uniformity, yes. <laughs> it, 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 it just, just so you know, it, it's not an ex the way it'll be designed. It'll be designed as 120 with a 30 foot extension. You don't, you're not going to do 10 feet at a time. It, it's not a formidable design. They'll do a 30 foot single shaft extension for it. So when the next carrier comes in front of you, it's not going to be. It can't be done incrementally by in, in tens. So it'll be 120, and then the carrier will come and say, "Well, we need that extension put on it." either an extension or not. That's the way they'll be designed by the manufacturer. So, so, yeah. so it's going to be a 150-foot tower, but built only 120 Correct. feet. Correct. With the last section, just not just you know, off. All you do is just yeah. take these. But with the expense of having the branches uniformly shaped with so the branch cap. And there, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't look like a, yeah. Yeah, we get it. No, I think that's, I mean, that's, a, that's definitely a valid question. And the question I had is sort of how scalable a monopine would be, uh, so that's that's helpful. Um, so I, I think I'm I'm hearing, uh, if not necessarily enthusiastic uh, sentiments, there seems to be an overwhelming preference for um, the monopine. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, well, I also just want to make a comment about buffering, and I think part of the part of the the challenge, if you will, with um, some of the buffering concerns on, on this site is that we have that the immediate abutters live in a neighborhood where there's, as was discussed, it's just sort of already clear cut between them and the stand of trees that separates will separate them from the tower. Um, and that's not, I would argue, that's not um, necessarily the applicant's burden. Um, that's sort of a unique characteristic of, of that site. Um, I will um, just uh, uh, draw attention to one of the staff's comments in Section C and buffering about uh, preserving the significant stands of vegetation on the subject property, which don't directly abut the tower location, but which right now provide some buffering uh, between the, the, the tower location and those abutters. And I would, um, I would strongly recommend that that be considered. Um, I also hear unanimous support for for seeing a design that shows 120 feet, with the ability to go up to 150 if if, uh, if necessary. Um, I am going to recommend that we not take a vote on final approval tonight for two reasons. Number one. We've not yet seen a design, and I think that this is sort of new enough and significant enough that to me it, it goes beyond sort of technical loose ends and um, you know minor details like what a fence might look like or something like that. We've yet to actually see uh, a design. Secondly, um, we've tried to be very deliberate um, so far as a board and how we've approached these, and I think as the, as the chair, that it's that it's very important for us to make sure that before we entertain a, a vote for final approval, that we sort of have our our findings in, in good order, 
and that for, for our own purposes and for the record, again, given partially that uh, the fact that this is, you know, we're, we're just sort of feeling our way through, through uh, reviewing projects under this ordinance, to make sure we kind of have all of our ducks in a row. Um, and I would suggest that it may be sort of thing which we do on occasion where, where we have we have it set up as a consent item for the next uh, meeting in three weeks where in, in the intervening time you can provide some design renderings and work through some of the other kind of technical details and then we when you come back we don't necessarily have to sit here and have a whole other long presentation and discussion but I just think it's important uh, that we that we really be deliberate and that we give ourselves the opportunity to look at the design and again make sure that we that we have um, very thorough findings and, and I'm, I'm speaking partially to the applicant sort of managing expectations but also to my fellow board members um, if folks feel strongly to the contrary um, you know I ultimately just one vote but that's that's my position as the uh, as the chair and that's the way I would prefer that we proceed if I could, um, sure. you're asking for a design. Um, what I'm going to bring to you is not going to be the actual specific tower design for that location. Uh, it's going to be a, maybe a sample tower design from another site like Leamington, like we said here, uh, and it's going to be a revision to that sheet in the plan set showing you what a CAD designer could do in AutoCAD, showing branches starting at 30 feet going to the top, tapered in a, in a pine tree fashion. That's really it. I, I can't get a site-specific design until I get approval, and then we go out and do a geotech analysis. We start actually take the soil samples, send them to the lab. Lab sends those down to the manufacturer. Manufacturer designs a foundation for 150-foot monopines, site-specific to that X marks the spot location. Only then can I actually get you a, a site-specific design. So that's until that's understood. Until now, I can present to you sample what to do, what not to do. You know, trees, mm -hmm. um, and I could I could give you a, like I say, a, I could give you the Lemington Tower design or something similar to that, so that you knew uh, this wasn't going to be a lean-looking tree. That it was going to be of the type and style that you've the boards indicated that they've that they've appreciated. So. Um, that's the best I can do at this point to meet. Uh, That's understood, and I, I think understanding the limitations, I, I still think that would be helpful, uh, okay. and I think it would be in the interest of everyone involved to sort of take our time, have one more go around. Um, you know, I know we, we often see applicants who are understandably anxious to get their approval. It's been a few years. And I've, I've You've been, been on, here right along with, I've, with, I've, with I appreciate for that. years now. I've been on the, oh. And I've been on the other side of that podium myself, too, yeah. so I understand. Um, but at the end of the day, um, the I grand have a question for the chair. Sure. Based on what I just heard and what he just said, and we're not going to get anything specific because the, the cart before the horse or vice versa, and he's going to come in and show us something similar to Limerick, what's that accomplish? Because in my mind, it doesn't accomplish anything. Because it's not going to be this specific. Or at the same point, we're trying to say right now, <laughs> as we're going to be three weeks. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see where, where something's going to change. So we can do it as a consent item. I, I don't, I don't want to sit here crafting a sort of on the fly without having seen that and craft a long motion with findings and all the other language I have conditions. No, I have no problem with waiting another three weeks. I have a problem with what is going to be presented to me in three weeks that's different than now. That's my question. One thing I would offer is we'll have clarity of record. Right now we have four, five, six different pictures of different monopines, and, but for the applicants who are discussion here tonight, it, it's not pinned down. Um, so that's, that's one item. One other item I do want the board to talk and weigh in on so the applicant knows when they're coming back to try to make this a clear and efficient potential approval at the next meeting is this discussion around buffering. Um, I guess I haven't yet heard if the applicant is willing to consider what was in staff comments in terms of preserving that landscaping that's not in the lease area per se but is part and parcel of their application in terms of the buffering and visual impacts 
um, that are depicted in the pictures. It's the, um, and, and just in case the written description wasn't entirely clear, um, I'll come back to the aerial photo and hopefully it's somewhat clear. Sort of the, this tree, these trees, again, this, I think the, the triangle, if I'm not mistaken, is the tower location, lease area. Correct. So there's these trees that are along this ravine that are between the existing worked gravel pit of Carter and the Carter, sorry, Carter Brooks subdivision open space, the existing stand of trees along Holmes Road, and an extent of trees along Broad Turn. Um, the board took a similar approach with the recent Mariner Tower at, at Fish and Game, and so again, I haven't yet heard if the applicants what the applicant's position on that, that comment is, and. Um, depending on what their position is, what the board's response to that is. So now, I find that a valid point. That I find valid. Is that within their lease area or not? It's outside of the, I believe the, there, there's a 100 by 100 lease area, or maybe it's a 50. I, 100 by but, 100. Um, but it's certainly on the subject property, and it, as I said, it's part of the visual impacts and buffering. The pictures we're looking at, the trees that are doing the buffering. So it's outside their lease area. That's my understanding, but that's, that's right. That's right. We lease a postage stamp. So how are we, as a town, making out their responsibility? Well, that's the, I guess that's the question for the board. Are you comfortable that there'll be adequate buffering and visual screening if those trees are removed by the property owner? Because that could potentially happen if you don't secure the buffering. So, again, the Mariner Tower is a good example of this. They had a 50 by 50 lease, and the board had them preserve trees along one of the property that's boundaries. Right. So my, my, my valid point yeah. is, we can say okay, but a hundred years from now, the property on outside this least area could decide to cut the we trees. We can say that's not our responsibility. So that's me as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's that. I think, as as the chairs point out, that could be said about any. There's buffers that the board requires to be maintained. That on it any shouldn't be a requirement that they have. To, you know, that's the question the board needs to. That's my yep. opinion. It shouldn't be part of their responsibility if it's outside their least area. Corey? Yes. Um, regarding the, um, that same issue, if um, Carter, the Carter property were to be developed, putting, uh, doing what Jay wants to, is suggesting, wouldn't that put some, uh, you know, some limitations on what could be developed on that property? You know, the Carter, the Carter property adjacent to where this tower is going? Well, so there's two Carter properties, and let's I'm be sure. We're, are you talking about the subject property? You're talking about the subdivision, the existing subdivision. Oh, the, property. the subject property, because we talked about. Correct. I believe at one time we talked about extending. Right, and road so was, might might be extending and come out onto Broughton Road. Yep. What, my my question is, if we put some limitations on, you know, outside of this particular leased area, wouldn't that put some limitations on future development of that? Cotter property. Yeah, and I, I, I'm glad you brought that point up because that was another comment in staff's because that was brought up, I believe it was in the, maybe the June meeting, could have been the August meeting, I don't quite recall, about having an understanding of what, because um, ultimately, um, as board members will recall, the, the minimum acreage to establish a tower is 25 acres. That can be reduced uh, down to five acres in the future, uh, provided that there's adequate buffering. And so that was one of the questions that was brought up, and I'm, uh, I'll, I'll find the plan here as soon as I stop talking. I can't do both at once. Uh, was about developing at least a concept plan that depicts what a five-acre site around the tower might look like that could accommodate a future development that could potentially tie into that um, Carter Brook subdivision extension that this board saw at that time when that was approved because um, that right away extends down to this property boundary to potentially allow for that type of interconnection um, uh, street network that we typically look for. So I'll, I'll pull that plan up in a moment, but that was another comment that staff had that we hadn't heard a response to and I think speaks to uh, the chair's notion of waiting and, and hearing what the responses are and be sure we're, we understand that in the future. So let me try to find that for you. Mr. Chair. Is it, um, I'm uh, just throwing out ideas. Is it reasonable to um, ask the applicant not to remove trees within the, at last, last meeting I had asked for that, what's the five acres look like? 
and they provided a diagram of it. It, it, I just wonder if, as a part of condition of approval, they would be willing to accept no removal of trees within that sketch five acres they provided. Um, does that take care of the buffering issue? I mean, is is that? I think the one thing there, if if there aren't very many trees within that five acre area that's being shown. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think largely the trees that are shown that are doing the current visual the buffering it. are more outside of it. Outside, okay. and again, that would be helpful if we could get maybe an enhanced rendering of okay. what that looks like. Um, and I'm trying to find the standard that talks about maintaining the trees, the preservation of trees, just again, so for the board, as you entertain the thought as to what direction to hit. I just, I just have one comment. I mean, I think the board does need to keep in mind, we don't have a five acre minimum size of this lot that we're trying to put the tower on. So future you know, subdivision, future plans would also come before the board or at least be developed that you'd be asked to consider. And we have one concept plan because I think that was a comment of a board member in terms of what a five acre par parcel might look like. It doesn't have to be that one. It could be a different one. It could be whatever the road, whatever makes sense in the future. So I think asking us to conceptualize every single future parameter is really both impossible and I think not required. Um, so I just want to keep that in mind when we're talking about where these buffering limits are and um, you know, we obviously want to do the best we can in terms of visual impact, but um, there's a point where that doesn't become feasible. So. What is the best you think you can do? <laughs> Showing. This is a fantastic. This is a fantastic sighting. I'd like Jay to go back to that street map if you would, because we're talking about. Let's 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 let's, let's, let's talk let's talk buffer. Uh, the trees that the trees that mainly block the view uh, of the tower, of the proposed tower, are those trees that run Broadchurch and Holmes. Do we agree on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So those trees, if I'm not mistaken, probably fall within. And there's a, there are a significant stand of pines. Uh, they fall within a building setback, if I'm correct. So they couldn't be cut anyhow, correct? Um, they could be cut if this became a subdivision. Those were single-family lots. You can clear your lot. So that road. So from dot number seven back to the intersection where dot number four is roughly located, that could all be wiped out? There's potential for it. Okay. Okay. And so we're, and so, there's, so we're concerned about that stretch of frontage that they own, and we're concerned about the Holmes Road stretch of frontage, and you're also concerned about the folks, seems mostly concerned about the view from Carter Brook Drive. Um, in order to buffer from Carter Brook Drive, because as you folks have, have have mentioned yourselves, there's such there's such there's such little vegetation. I'd have to encumber probably 20 or 30 acres of their land just for that buffer to keep it there today. Um, I can't do that. I think that's unreasonable. But you know, um, you know, I've got a hundred by hundred. I got a quarter acre piece of property that we've leased. We can do plantings along all four sides if the bo board chose, you know, so that if something were cut down, at least it looked presentable. I think the monopine is a good decision on your part because you've got greenery behind it and it will blend. Uh, it's not going to stand out looking like a pole, you know, 100% uh, of the time. So um, we've got this we've got this lease lot. There is no subdivision right now. Um, happy to do more plantings, but uh, to buffer in this location would mean significantly encumbering the Carter property. And you could probably forget about this future subdivision plan that you had were, were referring to now. Kind of, it's this kind of interesting dichotomy going on here, right? Well, I preserve I, yet preserve in both preserve buffer and preserve their their phase two. It doesn't. It's not going to work. Well, I just as a counterpoint to that, I think there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, one, this area that we're talking about, the Carterbrook folks. There is a ravine in there, and so that is protected by a stream protection area. So by and large, any subdivision wouldn't be cutting those trees anyway. Okay. So um, I think, you know, we can go through what the standard talks about, but the board has the ability, if there aren't significant, if the board finds that there can't be significant vegetation saved or it doesn't exist, the board can talk about plantings, as Planting. you just talked about. Um, and so the board could then start getting discussion about what is the right amount of plantings to put on this site. Or the ordinance does go on to say the board may require existing vegetation to be preserved. So again, you know, um, 
you know, I think in large part talking about maintaining these trees, once you really look into the details about what would be maintained anyway, probably isn't going to encumber much of the lot that would be developable. Um, and then there's, you know, a question, you know, I think the question then needs to be asked, what is the appropriate depth along broad turn in homes? Is it all the existing trees? Or is it some other variables at 20 feet? Is it 40 feet? Is it 50 feet? And I think that's sort of the evidence that probably the board would help the board in making their determination. Um, it, it may not be the entirety of what's there. Um, certainly, actually, I, I do know that uh, um, I believe it's Mr. Carter with his excavation uh, recently went to the Board of Appeals for an expansion of, of his pit, and I believe he's, as part of that process, he's required to maintain 50, 50 foot depth, I believe. Um, and that's just when, when he's operating at an excavation site, so he's going to at least maintain those trees when and if it gets converted to a subdivision, and I, again, I agree, you can't go through sort of every iteration of what a subdivision might look like, um, but when it does go through a subdivision process, that 50-foot restriction could potentially go away if there isn't some type of, uh, if the board, um, you know, at that time, you know, finds that it's okay to clear it, that's one thing, or if the board, um, you know, through this process, I think does have the authority to require the, um, the preservation of it because this is the subject property. I understand that Verizon's looking at the lease, um, but you, you really exactly. haven't clarified the thing. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, this is off their lease property. Maybe we didn't write this ordinance correctly, but we really can't actually yeah. okay. make them preserve something off the property. So if we can't do that, yeah. the way this ordinance is written, the way you're explaining at this point, unless this board decides to make a change, so they can't guarantee that those trees will ever be cut down. Yeah. If so I could, I just the way you're saying it, so we can't guarantee that those trees, mm -hmm. we can't preserve that buffer, then we can't approve the, the tower. The if way you're just you saying it to me now, if sure. we can't approve, we can't guarantee that those trees aren't cut down, we should not approve this tower. It's, it's, it's sorry, that the way it's this is written? Discretion. No, that's at the board's. I, I don't mean to say you okay. can't. It's at the board's discretion. Okay. I guess what, if so it would be helpful, I could read the, the provision, the ordinance. I'm trying to push it a little further than it needs to be changed. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I was just trying to point out what the ordinance had. But. And this is a discussion that hadn't even really occurred at this level. Can I? Um, and and I, I guess just in, uh, just a moment, please. I, I, to me, this sort of comes back to feeling like, you know, let's just take a breath and let's have one more, I agree one more cycle to, to, to sort these <coughs> things out, a little bit more due diligence on it, a little bit more back and forth with staff is appropriate. Let's have clarity of record. I think that's, I think that is important because at this point we've sort of been looking at a, at a menu of, of sample uh, design types. And again, I just think it's important that we be deliberate and I just never like being in the position where we feel that we are, are where the default is that we have to give approval because the applicant wants to get approval at a certain time. Um, and again, I've been on the other side of that podium. I know it's frustrating at times, but it's not our responsibility to, to um, make a quicker decision than we're collectively comfortable with. And again, if others are more comfortable, then then, then go ahead. Uh, and no. I don't mean to be combative, but that's that's. I think this is but I have not, well I have on more. track. But I don't think we're quite there yet. I, okay, I have no problem with that. But I do go along with what John's saying. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, we approve the project, and we want to and we want to maintain. Let's say I come in and I buy all that land, just for the sake of argument. I'm going to cut that land down if I want to develop. They don't have control over the, over the fact if I buy that from, as long as I'll meet the ordinances as an outside contractor. So in the deliberations, I want to clarify too that, that uh, they can't be held responsible outside the range of what they're leasing. We can hold them responsible, certainly, for what what is within the range of their responsibility. 
And so <coughs> I have a problem waiting another three weeks, and there are some gray areas here, but, but uh, I think John brings up a, a very important point. How can we dictate to somebody who doesn't own a piece of land? That would be like somebody coming in and telling me how to run my piece of land. I don't think we're saying necessarily that we're trying to dictate. I think we're saying that if there's a discussion and some more work that needs to be done on it, whatever the whatever the, the solution is. At least that's 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 where I am on it. And I don't yeah. I don't know how much more we can accomplish going around and around on this right now. Uh, I would like one to more tiny comment. Part of our findings we're talking about our findings under the current conditions in meet buffering than the order. Well, that's the question to the board that I'm not sure I've heard an answer from everyone on. Um, well, so it's good you brought it up right. and it's clarified. So in our findings, we point out that, yep. I and mean, that's part of our legal process. In our mm -hmm. findings, we have to approve under certain conditions. Under the current conditions, we find that the buffering is sufficient. We can't look down the road. Right, and that, I guess, um, Mr. Pont, that's what I was trying to point out with the discussion is so far as what the applicant has shown with their, with their visual simulate, uh, their photo simulations is the trees around it are trees that aren't within the lease area. And, and I understand they can't control that lease area. But what the ordinance does talk about is that the board can do one of two things. If you find that there isn't sufficient potential for sufficient buffering, you can have the applicant plant trees yeah. to meet that standard, or the board does have the authority to require concept to re put an easement on um, the landscaped areas. So I just just trying to point out that the board does have options, mm -hmm. um, and and that's what I think staff and the applicant are probably looking for some direction tonight as to so far. The visual buffering has been these trees that are well outside the lease area. If those go away, is the board still okay with this application? If so, great. That's that's but the I board's determination. Don't think it's contemplating trees that are five acres away because there happens to be a gap in the middle. I, I don't think that's reasonable. I think you're talking about what's inside the lease area and probably just around it. And uh, just from a perspective, I, I don't see how that strand, you know strand of tree. I don't know how far away that is, but it's it's pretty far. It's not adjacent at all to this site. Um, just the way this landscape is. We can certainly propose some additional plant things if, if, since we're coming back. I mean, a rat. Do you guys have site plan C3? Um, uh, with this recent packet? Um, it is in every packet, I think. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hear from uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Oglis. She's been waving her hand. While we're queuing this up, go ahead, Susan. I don't know why we're doing this. We were supposedly going to be doing a um, final approval. Obviously, we are not ready to do a private final approval. This was presented with way too many questions for us to be able to give final approval, as witnessed by where we are right now, okay? I think that we ought to cut our losses, admit that we don't know what we're doing right now. We don't. Get clear. Get some really good information from staff on exactly what our options are. If necessary, have a workshop about it. I don't care. But this is not the place to be doing this, okay? I would like to recommend that we, that I, I would like to um, second the chair's idea that we not try to do a final approval tonight, have another meeting and have it very cut and very dry and very clear as to exactly what we're going to do. We are not going to reinvent the wheel. We're not going to make a whole presentation again. We're not going to look at a whole bunch of things on the, on the we're just going to do this, this, and this. Okay. I, I agree with you. I think some of the discussion we've had has been, although it's been a little somewhat difficult, it's been helpful to a point, but at, at the honest <coughs> certain at point, point, it just starts to turn into ready. a design charrette, and that's not what we're here no. for. A motion to table it. So. So, uh, so, but we so need some direction. Yeah, what are we doing next? Uh, no. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. No. Mike. Yeah, I'm in favor of um, of hearing uh, hearing the applicant come back in three weeks, but 
I think what we need to give the applicant tonight is very clear direction so when they do return, they can hit the bullets and, and we can say it. yay or nay. Um, I was hoping to provide final time. approval tonight. Um, and part of me still would like to do that, but I get a sense that my colleagues aren't that comfortable. And I understand that in the old days, we used to craft these motions mm -hmm. on the fly. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that, that that was a good way of doing business, but uh, I do appreciate having time to be able to sit and digest. And this is, and, and this, this uh, cell tower ordinance is... We know it's new. It's new. In the application. So I appreciate the chairman's... Um, um, energy behind being extra careful. And, and uh, I'm not hearing from you <laughs> that more weeks is going to um, create any huge hardship. But I would... No, but we just need to understand the universe of where we are and what it is that are those final bullet points, because right now I don't know that I know what those are. Okay, fair enough. So if I can continue, I'll give you my bullets. Okay. We have 120-foot monopine. We have a 100 by 100 leased area, a 50 by 50 fenced area within that 100 by 100. I would, I would like that it be vinyl, black vinyl coated fence. Um, I've heard that we want 100 and, uh, a pad that supports 150 foot. And uh, I would like buffering. Um, certainly, um, you don't need to cl only, only clear that which is absolutely necessary for the infrastructure. So there, it appears that there would be opportunity to retain natural buffering within that 100 by 100 outside that 50 by 50. And I, I think, and a, uh, a design of the monopine that you propose to construct. To me, I would be satisfied with, with those things at the next meeting. I think, as far as I'm concerned, you've articulated it well. And uh, does anyone else have nope. anything to add? I think that I captures it pretty well. So, thanks for bearing with us. Thank you okay. And we'll see you in a few weeks. Number eight, BBS Enterprises requests site plan review for 62 Muzzy Road, Asian Fusion Restaurant, Assessor's Map R37, Lot 38. Jay? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's see. My notes here. As you just noted, this is an application actually for a mixed use development at 62 Muzzy Road. Uh, <coughs> so it's been before the board. At least two other times, uh, began with a sketch plan and back in the winter, and we saw it at least once this summer. Um, board members will recall what the applicant is principally seeking to do is to uh, construct uh, a, a new restaurant space of just under 5,000 square feet, which is within the, uh, just under the limit, size limit for restaurants in the TVC3. Applicants also seeking to repurpose the two existing buildings on site. The existing farmhouse will be an office space of roughly 1,500 square feet or so. And then there's also a, an existing barn that the applicant is proposing to repurpose. And again, we talked about the use of that barn at the last meeting, um, how there was going to be some coolers associated with the restaurant as part of that 5,000 square foot area but that um, the principal use will be considered an accessory use, um, it, by and large the applicant um, uh, maintaining that existing uh, uh, building. Um, let's see, you'll receive comments from staff, Woodard and Kern, and Goral Palmer. And a couple of the issues that are highlighted uh, have to do with site access. Board members will recall the applicant seeking requests for driveway separations. At the last meeting, we had requested that their traffic engineer provide an opinion on the matter, and he has done that, which is reviewed by Goral Palmer, and uh, generally agreed with the findings of the applicant's uh, engineer. Uh, board members will also note that the last meeting, uh, snow storage was discussed quite a bit, and um, there still seems to be some issues to be resolved in that regards moving forward. Um, let's see, as I go through my comments, um, we question the location of the bike rack. Um, I know uh, the applicant has had a discussion with 
uh, our town engineer with regards to connecting to the existing uh, uh, storm drain in Muzzy Road, and those issues have been largely worked out. Um, and um, again, depending on how the board feels on this item, we have prepared a motion with some conditions <coughs> that address a lot of these items. Um, lighting, there, there wasn't a photometrics plan uh, provided. And there's some question about the outdoor lighting along the patio. Um, I guess the other two other uh, items that we want to touch on, be sure we talk about are with regards to uh, HVAC systems or any uh, hoods that might be related with venting for the kitchen. Um, given some recent experiences, we know this is a, it can be um, a critical component to development and how it fits into a site. Um, the applicant has depicted an HVAC pad but has indicated that their HVAC systems haven't been formalized yet. So I think we want to be sure that the pad is properly sized in the proper location. We understand what those impacts will be. Um, and then finally, uh, we did talk when it was before um, there was, uh, let's see, we have the, um, in terms of architectural design, I think the board was largely comfortable with the applicant had proposed previously. Um, they did address, there was a question about some of the stone work, um, and they have addressed that. So again, as I said, staff, um, in reviewing the comments, um, we have prepared a motion should the board be um, so inclined this evening. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jay. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Allen. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, joined tonight by Mike Richmond from Custom Concepts and uh, Jamie Lang from the, uh, the restaurant. Um, as Jay had mentioned, uh, we've done a bit of work since the last time we were here. Um, since then, we have received all the DEP approvals. Those were forwarded to the town. Um, snow removal. We don't have a ton of room on our site for snow removal. That was something that was discussed the last time. We've put together a note that's on the plan that states that we are going to take advantage of the snow storage that we do have on site. When it's full, um, that snow is going to have to be removed from the site, similar to a, a bunch of other properties up and down Route 1. It's just kind of the nature <coughs> of the beast when you have a, a very full site, similar to ours. Um, pursuant to that, we received a letter, and I believe you've Folks may have had a copy of it from uh, the abutter next door at the Creative Imaging, um, with some concerns about us in snow storage along the parking area and not infringing on their property. They had requested that we put in a vinyl fence along the entire length of the property. Um, we looked at that, and while we agree that there is some fencing that should be put up, we don't agree that it should go all the way to the front. We think it wouldn't look as attractive as if it was in a spot that would actually do some good. So what we're proposing is a vinyl fence from roughly this area, right here, back to here. It's represented on this thing by kind of tie-in line. It's kind of hard to see, but it's from here to here. And that's mostly to protect the plantings that they have. They have some very nice-looking trees along the edge of their property. So we are proposing to put that fence in as they propose, but not all the way. They propose it all the way to the front. We thought that would block sight lines in both directions as well as just thought it had been very aesthetically pleasing. Um, and to the back, there's not much back there that really we can get in trouble with or hurt. There's plenty of room we, and the owners are going to, they're not going to subcontract snow removal. They're going to do the snow removal themselves. They understand the issues with the neighbor and they're going to take care when they remove snow. But that's where we are, those issues. Um, lighting. Um, one of the comments had to do with outdoor lighting. Um, the outdoor lighting that we're envisioning is probably some string lighting attached to some, maybe some overhead um, beams and stuff to kind of oriental looking for the Asian, kind of get the Asian restaurant feel. Those are going to be treated with probably string lights or very low level lighting. We've got an email from the lighting designer stating that that type of low level lighting will not create any light trespass. Um, it, it's so low it wouldn't even register in their photometric model. Um, so that being said, that's what we're planning for <coughs> the outdoor seating area. And again, that's, it's probably going to be only open in the, the seasonal warm weather months, we're guessing May until you know late September, early October. Um, as Jay mentioned, we've worked with the Public Works Director and Town Engineer to put a drainage system together. And Previously, we were talking about outletting um, in a 
ditch before the culvert, plus that stream crosses right here. We're now proposing a system that ties into a drain line that runs down ties into that same culvert. Um, we met with them on site. We, we talked through all the issues, and I believe we have the notes and, and, and so forth to be able to construct that in a manner that would be satisfactory to the town. And one last thing was bike rack. Um, we previously put it in the back, more thinking it was going to be used for employees, but Jay brought up a good point that uh, there's an office use proposed for this front building, so we're going to move that bike rack to the front near that walkway. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. He's going to talk about the HVAC. Uh, good evening, Mike Richman, Custom Concepts. Uh, specifically address staff comment L, sort of two components to it. Um, the HVAC system at this point has not been designed. However, I've specifically designed the building for the following. The air handlers themselves, the large units, would be within the structure itself in various portions of the attic space. The condensers or compressors that are necessary outside to produce the air conditioning liquid would be outside, ground mounted, and easily buffered um, as Lee has depicted it. The other piece is the uh, sort of the exterior elements necessary for the cooking appliances. And I actually just met with Jim Butler this afternoon. We discussed this. The applicant is sort of weighing out different options with various type of cooking appliances that will be at tables and various equipment in the kitchen. Pretty much all of them, though, would require, you know, the hoods and exhaust systems. The fortunate thing is that no matter how these play out, um, They'll be coming through. <coughs> they would be coming through the rear portion of this section of the roof, and therefore barely visible when driving by Mussy Road. This structure is much taller. The farmhouse is much taller, and they could be integrated well into the backside. So, the area that is has been depicted as having a few skylights in a previous rendition would have those hoods coming out the back. But again, barely visible at all, especially from the road. The area for the kitchen, which of course will have a, a larger hood system, would be coming out this back area, which is purely utilitarian. And the only way you'd be able to see that is if you are literally in the back looking at it, or maybe from a, a select area of the rear parking lot. But driving by here, and I just did this again this evening on my way here to double check, um, it, barely visible at all because this roof is so low and this building is, is higher. And there's a lot of, a lot of large vegetation. Is that it? Okay. Turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, who wants to start on this one? Anyone have I'll start. questions or comments, Ron? Yeah. Um, I understand what you're saying, but the previous chair taught me a lot about HVAC, and you're saying barely visible, but can it can they be enclosed anyway, even though it's only going to be barely visible? Well, I mean, there's a lot of code issues on that with the NFPA regulations. You mean enclosed as in making it look like a chimney or within a structure? What have we done in the past, Jay, when to keep them out of sight? Uh, let's see. The boards try to host the different uh, ways of approaching it, and I guess it would be upon the applicant to demonstrate to the board that it's not going to have a, what the board would consider an adverse visual impact. So, I, you know, it's, I'm, not, I'm not in any position to provide an answer to the question, having not but seen any details. But there are ways that they can be kept out of sight as, as, as a general comment. Is that not true? It would seem, that I'm sure. I mean, we've had other structures that we have had built that we put stipulations on so that they weren't visible. Correct. And that's all I'm saying, that this be follow that same line of thinking. Understood. There are, there are some tricks that we can do for that. We okay. can create I curbs and, and 
some ways to hide that. I, I mean, uh, based on previous experience, every time we've requested that, they've come out very well. I mean, so there, are, there is precedent to that. Um, what else was there? Oh, something, uh, you hit the lighting. Uh, have we hit landscaping? I know we talked about snow removal, but what about landscaping? So this is the landscaping plan that you presented. Um, a few of the trees, by putting up a fence, some of the, the alterations we'd like to make in this plan are remove, remove these three trees right in here. Take this tree, kind of scoot it out of the way so we have some room to store snow in, in this area right along here. So really it's just the removal of those three trees to provide the most more snow storage. Um, I, I think the, the questions came about, it seems like there's a lot of trees that may be blocking <coughs> snow removal or you're going to kill them while you're doing <coughs> snow removal. So it, it's more of understanding the issues of the snow storage issue, knowing that we have limited space and trying to make the space that we do have usable. Susan, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm married to an HVAC engineer, and they can do, they can do anything. And it's, it's absolutely, I'm not concerned about it. They'll take care of it. Okay. They know that we care, and they will care that we care. <laughs> I think that was the spirit, the spirit of, the, of the comment, yep. actually, that, that, it, that it just be <laughs> thought about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, we care. So. Something to do with the trees. And uh, one of the other, no, I knew. The other issues, the signage. Uh, staff that would, would give final approval to that. You'd have to pass by staff as a condition. At, at this point, that's what we have. We don't have any designs. If that was what we'd prefer to do, we're prepared, proposing to have the sign in the front. Um, but if the board is amenable, we'd like to to work with staff on that because we just we haven't got to that point yet in the design. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. John? Susan, take your hot medicine. <laughs> Talking about snow removal and snow storage, the northwest part of this site, what is behind that? It's the corner to the... Right here? It's all trees, right? It yeah. is... It's all wooded? It is all wooded, yes. So, Susan, don't be, don't be mad at me. Wow, wow, wow. You can take some of those landscape trees out of there and put some snow storage in there. Take those trees, put them towards the front of the property. It's yes. just a kind of a waste to put them back there when they're already wooded to begin with. I agree. And this latest concept, if you recall the last one, there was, was only a few trees here. We've actually added some trees mm -hmm. here. So what I'm saying some of the trees up there, yeah. I mean, keep the same budget and move them somewhere else. They're looking at woods to begin with. Yep. Doesn't make any sense for you guys put some more trees there. That yeah, no. whether you're talking dogwoods, basically some smaller trees, mm -hmm. just move them or eliminate them. Period. That yep. the northwest corner, even the towards the west side, that's still trees. Correct. That's the only comment I've got. Thank there you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, it's a nice plan. Well done. Um, it is very tight. Um, I'm not, I'm not, a, if, if I'm sensing you, I think are like me, not too excited about a vinyl fence at all, let alone um, even the distance that you talk about. I'm, I'm thinking that if you're plowing snow, that vinyl fence is going to last half a season. Um, I understand, you know, the, the issue with protecting the neighbor's vegetation. I think it's more important that a split rail fence would at least announce where that boundary is and would bring attention to those who are plowing snow to keep the snow on their own property. And if there's issues, there's procedures to, we can go from there. But I don't like the idea of a final fence just because I don't think it's going to look good in year two. I, and um, I know driving up Broad Turn Road, there's a there's a final fence near Hidden Creek that every exactly. time a snowfall goes by, it blows up. Exactly. That's, and that, so, I would agree. This is this is more of a reaction to the abutters' concerns and us trying to to be the good neighbors yes. to the abutters. Yeah, yeah, sir. And I'm sure um, he or she uh, appreciates that as much as I do. But uh, I don't think that's a solution. It seems like the challenge is going to be just is taking the snow from the front of the site and moving it to the back. 
because it, it, it appears that, like John pointed out, you have ample opportunities to store it back there. Yeah. So um, maybe a part of the condition, and forgive me, maybe there should be a plan. Is there, a, is there a at least a um, some sort of plan as to how snow will be managed on the site? It, it just we identify snow storage areas and say when they become full, then the snow must be removed, mm -hmm. and, and that's the note that we've added to the plan. You, and it might it might need to go just a little further. I know we're looking for final tonight, but it might just describe that you know, insofar as it's practical, the snow accumulated on the front of the site should be moved to the rear of the site for the, for storage. I know you have a couple of snow storage uh, um, uh, areas in the front, but that conflicts, frankly, with your comment about the fence because I think right. that can limit. Uh, uh, site distances in and out of the uh, property also if that's yep. left uh, unmanaged. So I, I wouldn't be in favor really of using the front of the site to, to uh, store snow because anything like last year can easily be eight feet high. Right. But um, I, if it's good looking, good looking site. I think you've done a great job with it. Um, I love the uh, renditions. Um, we haven't talked about colors and roofs, but I, I, I'm sure that uh, it's going to meet our design guidelines, and certainly the pictures would indicate so. As far as hiding the uh, the, um, the vents, you know, we've seen fencing put on roofs and things of that nature, and it doesn't appear like you'll need much. So, like Sue says and others, I'm sure you'll be able to meet that challenge. So those are my comments, Mr. Chairman, uh, but I'm in favor of approval of this project. Um, again, I think the only thing lacking might be just a little bit more detail as to how snow is going to be managed to the satisfaction of not only this board, but, you know, uh, the concerned neighbor. There are legitimate concerns. I don't think that fence is, uh, is <coughs> I think a fence may be an answer, at least partly an answer to announce where the line is. Because I know when you're plowing snow, you see a split rail fence. I mean, you're constantly going to be reminded that I got to stay on one side of, over the other, you know. But I don't think the vinyl's going to do it. Thank you, <coughs> Susan. Um, I agree that vinyl isn't going to do it. Um, I was reviewing the proposed draft motion that we that staff presented to us, and one of the items there is prior to the issuance of a permit of a building permit, the snow storage plan shall be revised to address the deficiencies and so on. So it's being recommended that as part of the approval, that an actual storage plan needs to be written up. And I want to <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Sue. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that takes care of my concern on that idea, and also. The um, number four, prior to issuance, final plans for the HVAC and kitchen hood should be reviewed by the planning department. These things that we're mentioning, you know, are, are, are all, I think. The signage, I would just like to suggest that because I think signage is one of those things that's very personal and we have a, a really important attitude towards it in Scarborough, that it might include the chair as well as the, the staff. Staff might make sure the chair reviews it as well. Um, was there anything else? No, I, I'm very excited that you're coming. I can't wait. Um, I have a couple of quick questions which I don't really expect answers to right now. It's mostly curiosity. I do love a good landscape plan, and it doesn't bother me in the least that we take those trees out of the back and make snow storage for it. So there. Um, under trees, it's got four different, one, two, three, four different ways of saying heritage river birch, and they're all different sizes, and I don't know why we would want one size over another size. It's just very confusing to me, but I don't want us to take up time for it. Just notice that I do, I do look at these things. I also want to just say that I think that some of the things that you've added that are like garden uh, are going to require a certain amount of um, maintenance, so just make sure that maintenance plan is part of this. Other than that, I don't have any questions or problems. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Roger? <coughs> Thank you. Um, the only comment I would say is uh, regarding the sign, uh, where your neighbor is going to be obvious, is obviously very sensitive to the location of the driveway, the entrance. Um, I think you might want to consider moving the sign closer to the front of the building because 
I can envision people coming down there and then all of a sudden seeing a sign and pulling into the wrong driveway, and that would just end up irritating your neighbor. So um, I think you've um, you've talked enough about the snow removal. Um, so I don't. Oh, I just had one of. Um, we talked. I think you talked about outdoor, outdoor seating. Yes. That's going to be on those pavers, I assume, right? On yeah, the on the left side of the building. This area right here. Okay, and that's where it's going to be the um, the timbers or something. Exactly. Okay, fine. Yeah. I think I'm all set. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you. Um, Roger kindly took my one and only point, which was. <laughs> um, I written down it. You did, didn't you? You cheated. Um, <laughs> Uh, which, which is I would ask staff to just evaluate the sign location when you're going over the signage just just because those driveways are close together perhaps it belongs on the other side but I'll let you guys sort that out um, and then uh, I will I will now copy Susan and say I am excited as well so good luck to you as well thank you um, I think all the grounds been covered pretty well I think you've done a great job with a kind of a tricky site and been very responsive throughout. Um, and uh, I think we've got, you know, we do have a, a draft motion here, the conditions of which I think address pretty thoroughly uh, <coughs> some of the loose things that have been mentioned here around uh, snow storage and, and uh, those sorts of things. So um, rather than belabor things, I will make a motion. I move to approve the application of BBS Enterprises, Inc., represented by NCS under Chapter 405, Zoning Ordinance, and Chapter 405B, Site Plan Review Ordinance, with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings as stated in the record. There's one waiver. Based on the site characteristics and the evidence provided by the applicant's traffic engineer, the board waives the driveway separation standard for the proposed access drive in relation to Honan Road and to the driveway for 64 Muzzy Road. Conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, pay traffic impact fees, B, execute and record the maintenance agreement required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance, C, finalize the 10-foot easement for the public sidewalk along Muzzy Road, D, provide revised plans to address comments and planning staff's comments related to Plan Note 9, bike rack location and lighting. E, provide detail of fencing discussed during board deliberation. We're not stipulating any specific type. Two, prior to, the, to connecting the on-site system to the existing public stormwater system in Muzzy Road, the public system shall be flushed and cleaned. Notification shall be made to the town engineer and public works director at the time of installation of the DHM2 in order for the town to inspect the connection. Three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the snow storage plan shall be revised to address the deficiencies identified in, in staff comments. Final snow storage and or removal plans may be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the final plans for all HVAC systems and kitchen hood vents shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Five, prior to the issuance of signage permit, the final sign design and location shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Six, a pre-construction meeting is required before the start of construction. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and his contractor, and utility company representatives if applicable. A pre-construction meeting may be scheduled in coordination with the senior planner. Second. Second. motion. Second. Any discussion? I, I wrote down a note to talk about the sign, but I'll just add that my, my preference, especially in that kind of area, and I agree with the location suggested by my colleagues, is that it be a lower type monument type sign as opposed to a pole mounted. That's all I would add. Yeah, I would agree with that. Any other discussion? We need to approve the... No, that's just a comment. Please. Comment? Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck and looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs>
subdivision review for a four lot conservation subdivision titled Bell Family Subdivision, Assessor's Map R30, Lot 6. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, board members will recall we saw this at our last meeting. Um, the applicant has responded to uh, staff comments, and at this point, uh, we think the preliminary plans are in pretty good shape. You'll notice that uh, at this point, uh, there were some questions about the net residential calculation that we worked through with the board. and. Um, the board was satisfied with the direction that was uh, headed. Uh, lot C has been revised. Uh, the zoning administrator now finds that it, it meets uh, the frontage requirements. Um, really, the only couple of things left are there's some final subdivision notes that need to be put on the final plan um, that the board will ultimately sign. Town engineer has a few comments um, in terms of stormwater design, but again, items that we believe can readily be handled between a preliminary and final approval. So at this point, staff has prepared a motion for the board to consider. It being preliminary, it's a pretty uh, baseline approval. Um, we'll get into more specifics when we get to the final, but um, staff really has no further comment on this application at this time. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Allen, do you have anything to add? Thank you. I was just going to say, other than just showing you that the change we made Lot C to Lot B, stretch the frontage this way. There's a little bit more building area in the front. We kind of pull away from B and then we angle the back. From the last time we met, really, it's the only change other than dotting some I's and crossing some T's. And turn it back to you if you have any questions. All right. Thank you. Anyone have anything else on this? Thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I missed the last meeting, so forgive me, but uh, it looks like a pretty uh, pretty simple layout. I understand that the board commented on um, above uh, ground utilities to access? Correct. Okay. So, so there, there, I believe that in the ordinance it states that all utilities should be underground, but we're not building infrastructure, not building underground, and that road is currently served by overhead utilities. Right. It just kind of makes sense. Yeah, it makes, makes good sense here. Um, I'm curious, in Lot D, um, it doesn't have a um, an owner's name, but is that occupied that lot? It, the house is currently unoccupied, but it was owned by the the parents. Oh, okay. And All right. They passed away that house. Uh, I think it may be rented. Okay. So, but it's, it's owned by the the Bell family. I see. Okay. Very good. And. Um, Looks like there's good separation with driveways. I know West Beach Ridge can be maybe problematic sometimes getting out. I think as we move forward, um, it might be a good idea to see how folks can turn their vehicle around and and, and approach West Beach Ridge head on as opposed to yes. backing out. Yes. But other than that, not much to say. Uh, nice to see Bruce on, uh, uh, see something coming from him. I know he's been... Uh, uh, fine gentleman and advocate for uh, all things that are good in this town for many years. So I, I wish you best of luck and look forward to the next uh, reiteration. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay. Appreciate the uh, responsiveness on the on lot C and nothing really more to add at this point. So I will move to a preliminary subdivision plan titled Bell Family Subdivision with the condition that the applicant address planning and engineer staff comments prior to final approval. Second. Do we have a second? Any further discussion? Was that discussion or were you? Sorry, I'm ready to vote. Okay. All right. <laughs> All in favor? All right. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10, Main Family Eye Care requests a site plan review for 370 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 44. Jay. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, as you just noted, this is a application to repurpose the existing building at 370 U.S. Route 1, uh, currently home of Cliffs Antiques. The property is in the B3 zone, and it is also uh, encumbered by a uh, portion of it anyway by a stream protection overlay area. Um, this item was before the board back in July for a sketch plan review, and they've now obviously provided the final details we need to begin our formal site plan review. Um, as I let's see, you will have received comments from planning staff, Woodard and Curran, Goral and Palmer, our traffic peer review engineer, as well as Angela Blanchett, our town engineer. Um, obviously, there's sort of a host of comments, but you know, sort of on a high level, the um, principal area of interest um, in terms of site elements has to do with site access and internal vehicular circulation. Um, once we got looking at the details, um, given the current design, there were some concerns that were raised about uh, the performance of the proposed uh, drive aisles and particularly parking spaces on the northerly side in terms of accessibility and, and drive aisle width. Um, staff and our peer reviewers have a sort of a host of comments that aim to see if there's uh, opportunities to potentially look at a redesign that might accommodate <laughs> some of the zoning uh, site plan standards that seek to reduce curb cuts and reduce the number of turning movements that would need to be made on Route 1, uh, particularly anyone on, who would park at that northerly parking lot right now, their only access to Route 1 would be to go northerly on Route 1, and if they wanted to do a south movement, they would have to travel up Route 1 find a place to turn around and then t get back onto Route 1 to head southbound. So we, we have some comments and, and maybe some ideas that the applicants had an opportunity to look at uh, to maybe consider uh, ways of, of eliminating the need for that movement. Um, some other issues that were addressed, uh, the applicant has identified some snow storage areas that were, are within the 25-foot stream setback. Uh, we'd like to um, see that removed in efforts to try to preserve and buffer that stream as best we can to, so that the salt and sands don't get moved into there. Um, as I already mentioned, Water and Kern has some comments with regards to stormwater. Um, as, I, as I mentioned with the last applicant, or, or the restaurant, I suppose, is, uh, in terms of HVAC systems, has the applicant sort of considered what's existing on the building? Is that adequate? Are there other elements that will be need, need to be added, and have those been adequately considered? Um, and then I just want to mention that, and I know this was an issue that came up during sketch plan review, um, so the applicant is proposing to repurpose the existing building, um, and so our design standards actually have a a, a chapter, a page or so about um, uh, design standards uh, dedicated to sort of the re renovation of existing structures. So um, we turn the board's attention to those and, and consideration to that. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you for, for discussion. You, yep. And I will hand it off to the applicant. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin Downing from Garland Turgeon Architects. Working with uh, Main Family Eye Care and uh, VED Engineering uh, to help bring you this project. As Jay mentioned, uh, we are proposing to renovate the existing structure to a 3,700 square foot office space for Main Family Eye Care and an adjacent uh, 1,700 square foot future tenant suite. Uh, at our previous meeting during sketch plan, uh, there were some concerns about uh, the materials and the forms of our renovated uh, elevations, and we've gone ahead and made changes, uh, significant changes to those elevations. Uh, primarily, the form has stayed intact. Uh, two parapet walls on the uh, elevation facing <coughs> Route 1, uh, floor to ceiling glass at, at those uh, either end. Uh, the parapets did shrink from our previous iteration, and the thing that really changed uh, was the materials. Uh, we have three different materials now breaking up the facade, uh, final clapper, final shape, and then a stone veneer face. Uh, they are final. It's not tip, you know, they're not uh, wood shakes or wood clapboards, but we think that uh, durability-wise uh, and uh, 
uh, economically, it's a, a much better choice. Um, the landscape has been designed to evoke a coastal main character. Um, much of the plant material is similar to many of the plant things you see in commercial and beachfront properties around the uh, around the town. Um, all designed to have low impact, low maintenance. Um, nearly all the plant material is either native, drought tolerant, and or recommended by you guys and your uh, design standards. Uh, the proposed landscape, a as drawn and as reviewed uh, in the packets that you've been provided, uh, does reduce the non-vegetated area from 12,000 square feet to 10,900. As Jay mentioned, we don't show any uh, pads for HVAC equipment. We do plan to have HVAC units mounted on the roof uh, towards the back of the building. That combined with the parapets at the front, we anticipate that they will be well screened. With regards to the recommended, or some of the comments regarding the layout, site circulation, and internal drives, uh, those are kind of tied into snow storage as well, so I'm just going to kind of tackle both of those together. Uh, in reviewing or receiving your comments, we agree that we like your kind of recommended layout. Uh, I would just add or and say that one reason that we didn't initially do it the way you're somewhat recommending is that it somewhat flies in the face of a couple of your other recommended <laughs> guidelines. So it really was which guidelines do we start following. Um, so I, I can assure you we're trying to do the right thing. Uh, but that being said, uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but I did overlay a quick sketch as to how a more typical lot might look if it was uh, placed over here with no curb cut. The, the real problem, it, from my perspective, or, and maybe from yours too, is this front drive. Um, it encroaches on several things. Uh, most noticeably, your Route 1 green space. Uh, and for two-way traffic there, at a minimum, you're going to need to have at least 18 feet. Uh, that combined with what, you, what your guidelines recommend that for a five feet being away from the building, you're already 23 feet away from the building, almost off the property, let alone setbacks. That being said, um, the site works much better this way. Um, we would like it this way. Uh, there's much more room for snow storage, and it's not in the 25-foot setback. Um, we do lose a parking space this way. Uh, You only have one curb cut, and again, it kind of it, it uh, will force us to relocate our sign. Other than that, we do like your proposed uh, layout, and we propose, or we will likely lean towards something like that for our final um, application. I guess with that, I will turn it over to Jason Vafiades from VED Engineering, and he will talk a little bit about some of the stormwater and utilities. Hello, Jason Vafiades, uh, Vafiades Engineering Design, which I'm actually slash FST at this point now, too, so kind of moving spaces as it is. Um, really, I'd, we'd like to talk about stormwater. There were a couple of uh, comments that us egghead engineer types kind of uh, squabble over. Um, <laughs> The, uh, it's important to me, this site is located, the parts of Route 1, and the whole site now is, is the gravel area of the building, sort of drain overland. Um, there's a stream actually back here that's fed by quite the, the hardy, um, I think it's like a five-foot uh, concrete uh, round culvert. 
Uh, and currently what happens is the water just kind of goes over the bank and into the stream, and uh, that's typically, it's not really something that um, I want to continue doing for this site, and uh, even though that we're reducing impervious area, I'm actually trying to put the water in the ground um, before it washes over the top of the bank anymore. And the way we're doing that is we're going to use these uh, new pave drain uh, mm -hmm. system, which uh, pervious pavers. And we're going to shed the water on two sides this way, and then depending on what the layout is, uh, we're still going to come down this way. Um, and pending, I'm going to get a couple of, uh, I've actually gone out here, this whole site is a fill site. Uh, the actual in situ uh, soils are about, I think about four or five feet deep from the existing gravel layer. What they just kept bringing in fill on this site. Um, it's all pretty good gravel, but we're going to do a couple test pits just so I know how deep that gravel goes if I need to underdrain the uh, the uh, pavers, which we'll have done for the next time. But uh, I just wanted you to know that we were sensitive to the sort of the natural resource that we got back here, and we are going to try to uh, fix it up so we don't have any sort of ongoing uh, drainage and erosion issues that are on the back. Um, as far as utilities, um, we are going to bring in a new gas line that isn't on your plans, but will be on the next plan. And uh, pending the the, uh, the location, not the location, the size and the uh, condition of the services, we will probably bring in a couple of new services for water as well, which in which case we'll bore under Route 1 to make any new connections. And that is it for uh, utilities. If anyone has any questions for me or Kevin. Do you, does your team have anything else for presentation? Okay. If, if I may, just for a brief moment, just to sure. provide a little bit of context for the board, because um, as the applicant indicated, you know, obviously we all know this site, or presumably we know this site. It's a developed site, but is heavily constrained, as we can all see by the stream that runs along the back of it, the existing conditions of the site, and, and um, staff comments certainly recognize that the applicant was trying to be sensitive to that 15-foot Route 1. So I guess what I... They were trying to be sensitive to that 15-foot uh, streetscape buffer along Route 1, but this site represents a host of characteristics that we won't see on many sites. And so I think, you know, as the board goes through its discussion, we're going to run afoul of something. And so the question is, what do we run afoul of? Curb cuts. Is it the allowing for a drive aisle within that streetscape? Is it uh, trying to, you know, development closer to the stream. All these things the board, to an extent, can allow for. So, uh, you know, I want the board, as you're thinking through the proposal, um, sort of help, help the applicant understand what should be the master, <laughs> so to speak, because the board does have that deference um, to work around design, uh, uh, certain design characteristics. Um, so I just wanted to sort of put that out there that we are going to run afoul somewhere and we need to sort of understand what is it that's going to be the guiding force uh, right. going forward. So right. it's, it's, it's a good valid point. It's a repurposed site. And in some ways it's almost similar to we have an, an existing nonconforming use and we, we have a little bit more leeway as long as we feel as a board that we're, that we're making things right. better overall and we're kind of prioritizing. So thanks for making that point. Before we go to full board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment. If there is anyone who'd like to come on up and introduce themselves, any comments or questions? All right, seeing none, we'll just go right to the board. And uh, Susan, would you like to go? <coughs> My grandmother would be so excited. She was the oldest living resident in Scarborough for many years. And every time she went by that building, she'd shake her head and she'd say, such a shame, <laughs> such a shame. So anything being done to this building is exciting to me. But it is a host. It's like a hornet's nest trying to figure out which way do we go in, you know. <clears throat> my concerns, my, you know, we're all going to have our own little concerns. My concern is, number one, the stream. I have said that since the last meeting we had, I drove down there, parked my car, and got out and walked to the very edge. It doesn't really look like it there, but it does. It drops right 
precipitously down into what is not a dry stream. That's a wet stream. There's quite a bit of water that goes through there. That's true. Yep. And, you know, it, it, it actually is more than a stream to me because, you know, you've got a brook, you've got a stream, and then you've got a big stream. <laughs> this is a big stream. Um, I'm very grateful for what it was you said because I'm feeling better already that it's going to be looked at very closely. Um, you'd never be able to build that building today. No way. So if you're going to use a building that is really not in any way conforming, we're going to work with you, but, you know, you have to work with us too. Um, the other thing has to be, I, uh, by the way, I have no problem with the one-way exit. I think this is a much better suggested layout for the for the site. I think we're on a, we're on to something in terms of making the site work better. The devil is going to be in the details for this, and I'm going to go on record as saying that I think that the architecture needs to be looked at yet again. If um, if nothing else, we I think we can we we can make gestures to really make that building look like it, it belongs in Scarborough, and to me that doesn't. And if you re and and I, I was thinking the other day, and I checked with Jay just to make sure that this was something that we could actually do. Is there some confusion as to what? It, remember earlier we were talking about. Oh, what's that word? Oh, we did it with. Um, so, it's it's all in how you look at it, okay? So you look at our guidelines, our, spe our uh, design guidelines, our design standards, and then you try to apply them. And there are as many ways of doing it, of course, as there are architects, whatever. But this is not what you're presenting. If you pull it out again, the um, architectural... It is definitely an improvement <clears throat> over your first one. There's no question about it. But it just does not, for me, anyway, work as what we had in mind for that part of Route 1. And one of the things that can be done is we can get peer review for architecture. I'm not saying I'm asking for it. I'm just saying if there's confusion and we're not sure what it is that we're looking for, we can always ask for review for architecture. So I just want to put that out there as a possibility. I'm not asking for it right now, okay? And if there, if it, you know, there's also, you know, staff understands pretty well what it is we're looking for when it comes to architecture. So those are my two things, wetland control and architecture. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Roger? <coughs> Thank you. Um, on, on the, um, the track, <coughs> the parking and everything, <clears throat> is this the plan right now? Is this what's before us? Is this what we're going to be going? I, uh, frankly, I'm a, a little bit confused at what we're looking at there. So yeah. I, no, I, it's not what was presented. <laughs> I to thought you. There, I thought there'd be some confusion. The the plan that is in front of you, I think, in your book. Is this the curved one? Yes. Yeah. Right. That has an access. Yes. That's the one. You in your comments recommended something a la the rectangular shape over here. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I've shown right there are the two the two uh, different proposed or, or possible layouts. Uh, I myself and the client are, are leaning towards your recommended uh, recommended layout. We like that one better where there's only one <coughs> curve cut. Again, as Jay mentioned, there are going to be a couple things. That some, something's got to give with this layout, there are, a current, there are a couple things that do not meet your design standards. Well, even if you went with this one here, it would seem to me that whoever is the tenant in <coughs> on that side, when they want to go south, they're just going to cut across the front and go out the... Go out, the, go out here? No, no, they're going to cut across the front right there. And that's a possibility. We, we designed it. It's designed as a one-way access. It would be difficult, but yes, you would find drivers who would try and could do it. You're right. Especially the people who work there. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Um, the, the, the right only exit on from that side is very unattractive from our perspective yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, Roger, may I, may I ask a point of clarification? Uh, with your new design, 
are you proposing to maintain it as a one? I guess I, I thought I heard that you were proposing with your new design to cut off that right out only and you would make that two way in front of the building. Is that what you're thinking of heading towards based on staff and peer review comments? That's correct. We are okay. thinking of, yes, listening to yes. your recommendations. Okay. This would be two way now instead of one. And right. No curve cut over here. And so the impact would be to that that 15 foot streetscape, but what it would do would be to get us down to the one curb cut and less traffic movements on Route 1. Exactly. So it's really a, okay, just because I wasn't clear on that point, so I wanted to jump in since we were on it. Thank you, Roger. I'm well, sorry. And, and in the staff comments, you I, I believe it was may even better uh, your comment, Jay, maybe not, uh, but if it's good, I'll take credit. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good comment. <laughs> You asked us to look into how, what our minimum two-way right. width could be, and uh, at the minimum uh, would be 18 feet, uh, and even that is pushing it. Uh, as shown, it's 18 feet. Any more, and, and again, it would encroach potentially off the property, which is, uh, I, I'm not even sure if that's doable, or closer to the building, which again is not advisable. Now, when you talk about the um, two-way entrance and exit, um, you, it's mentioned in here it's going to be at the front of the building. So are you talking about moving the existing one, that curb cut to the front of the building, or leaving it where it is now? I'm not sure where, yeah, where it says the front of the bu building, but yeah, the, this would be the curb cut in both schemes. This stays right where it is. Okay. <coughs> um, I, I, I looked at this site too, and I noticed that on, on that side of the building, the gravel actually goes right up to the, that stream. Okay. It's, it's basically pie. Right here? Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was right and, and again, that, that was part of the site challenge is making use of what's already been a gravel site over here, but we yeah. can't get to that site and, yeah. and then leave. Sure. Um, so again, that's, yes, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and just out of curiosity, I think somebody mentioned at a previous meeting that this, that stream has no name or anything. It's just, that's a no-name stream? Or? I believe it's unnamed. I look for it. Yeah. Does it go anywhere? It does go someplace. It is not what it, the one that's will, that uh, abuts and uh, empties into none such at the golf course. Will it has a name. It's will the one right next hill. to it that does not have a name, but also empties out into none such there. Okay. Uh, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Nick? Yeah, so if, I <coughs> if I'm following correctly, no curb cut on the right side, and you're gonna have a larger parking area on the right, my right. Correct, yeah. Um, and you want to turn that in front of the building two way, cars crossing over each other. So you're asking, you're asking for my opinion on whether or not I'm sacrificing a buffer or a curb cut. I'm saying sacrifice the buffer, the the 15 foot buffer. If you've got to sacrifice it, sacrifice it. I think that's the first thing, the the least important. In my my mind, um, I, I you know I'd rather I'd rather see that than encroaching further on the unnamed stream or um, you know the second curb cut, which I think I'm I'm with you. I don't necessarily like the second curb cut, so that would be my input. Other than that, um, I agree with I'll say, I semi agree with Susan. Um, <laughs> I I would say. Um, you have challenges because you have a flat roof, and a lot of our design standards in the New England styles all have wonderful, beautiful roof lines and things like that. Um, I, I gotta believe though, there's a better way to make it appear less um, pain road, and you know, um, and more more to the area if we can. There's got to be something and good luck being creative with it because you got a flat roof. So, but it, it does it's very boxy. Um so I semi agree with Susan. Look at it. Um That's about it for right now from what I'm seeing, but thank you. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, I agree with Nick about giving up the buffer for you know and having the one clear cut and making it two way. I do have a question. I guess I'm not sure about is the eye doctor going to occupy the whole building or is he going to only occupy part of the building and lease out the rest? Occupy part, lease out the rest. Okay, we have no idea if he has a potential 
USC going in there? Uh, I, I do not believe he has any potential <coughs> disease, yeah. Uh, if, if I have this correct, then uh, parking would be an issue as to what could go in there, the amount yeah, of and we, available parking spaces. That's true. Okay. Uh, we did look at this a little bit at a sketch plan. Uh, I believe we can provide for almost everything, all uses except for a couple, and I have to go back and, and look for you, but um, nearly everything uh, is four spaces or less per 1,000 square feet, and this uh, allows for that in that space. What about walkways? I guess I, you may have mentioned it, but I lost it somewhere. Is there going to be a walkway in front of the building? Is, is there something now? We do show a, uh, a sidewalk along Route 1 to be constructed. There's no internal walks. We have two connections, uh, sorry, one connection right now with the, pro the newer layout. We may have two connections to that sidewalk. I, thank you. I, I, I miss it. <coughs> and uh, I think that's all I have for right now, too. Thanks, Ron. John? Oh, well, Pat, we are going later on. Everybody's discussed anything I have in, in mind. Thank you. Thank Mike? you. Thanks. Um, I might suggest that um, next time you put up your rendition on the top and the current view of uh, cliffs on the bottom. Kind of keep reminding us <laughs> how much I, of an I think I had existing <laughs> elevations in the packet, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Like I love that. um, That's on my line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've come a long way, certainly, and I and there's always can be improvement. I understand that uh, the building <laughs> the building itself. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh dear. The building can only be you know, you can only put so much of a shine on a sneaker, so to speak. But uh, That's I think a nice way of saying that. Yeah. You're getting there, and uh, I appreciate your effort. Mm -hmm. And I applaud your continuing to tweak to make it look a little bit more, uh, a little more uh, regional, New England. Um, I do hope that you're able to screen the um, HVAC systems, though, um, because I've seen, I've seen these these flat roofs, and boy, those those HVAC systems really take over. So I'd hate, I'd hate for you to go through all this effort and time and money and then have those <coughs> back systems uh, <clears throat> be the first thing one sees. Because I think the elevation of the building is such it's a little bit lower, Route 1 also. I mean, I think it would no, be easy. Yeah. So even if you have to increase that, what do you call it, parapet? Parapet, yeah. The, some sort of fence or whatever. Um, I don't really care. I don't really mind the two cuts, but I'm not a, a traffic engineer. Um, but I, I, the fact that you're in agreement with um, staff and um, and others, that's fine with me certainly. And I don't mind giving up some of the buffer along Route One, but some will be retained, would it not? And can you tell me what the width would be? I mean, we're not saying there's no buffer or there's no lands opportunity to landscape between Route 1 and your... Oh, no, no, no. You're retaining, yeah. The About 18 feet. Yeah. And that, that's enough to work with, I would think. Uh, the, um, the sidewalk, I think it might be kind of a nice design element from the sidewalk to allow for connection. <coughs> I know that a lot of folks aren't maybe walking on Route 1 at that part of Route 1. There is a sidewalk currently. Or is it just an easement for? A I don't think there's a, there's a, a, a paved, raised. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Raved. It's all curb cut, and I think there's like one little paved island, yeah. maybe right in front it's of the not building. A Everything <laughs> else is curb cut. Pull in and out as you want. So okay. this is. Uh, I was going to suggest if there, if there was any kind of like a sidewalk, you'd, you'd make a connection where someone could go from the sidewalk to the front door, um, through the landscape. Yeah, and we've got one here. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. All right. And, but uh, as Jay pointed out, there are there's no sidewalk on yeah. either side of our... Well, our the fact vertical. that there's an easement for one, I mean, we've seen that. For years we've mm -hmm. seen easements and then eventually do get built. So that's that's the important part. Um, any any uh, any issues in your mind with that first parking stall uh, when you come in off Route 1, uh, right to the right? If one is to occupy, yeah, backing, no. Yeah, the first one you Previous one, to. yeah. 
that one. I think it just it just tells me that you might want to look at that a couple times just to make sure that if that's occupied, someone's going to want to back out, and you got somebody coming off Route One that needs to get off the main the main road. I think the only business that doesn't adhere to that philosophy is Dunkin' Donuts. So <laughs> and may I point out there's a similarity here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we don't want that. We don't want stacking. Um, I guess uh, I guess my question is: Is are you right at the uh, minimum for parking for most, if not all, uses that you would envision? No, I think if I go back and look at it, I think we have two or three extra spaces. Yeah, if one was to go, I might vote for that one. That's all. And uh, uh, kind of truck traffic. I mean, you have a dumpster. Uh, can can trucks move in and out of that site? Okay. Um. We did go. We did meet with the fire uh, inspector. Um, again, all all of these comments pertains to our yeah. you know, cur curb cuts. And, and quite frankly, I do have to go back. And if we are going to um, use this other layout, I'm going to have to talk with him about that because he particularly liked being able to drive right out. Oh, sure. Yeah. Circulation yeah. for a fire truck very easy. Right. Um, but yeah, we we anticipate that a a uh, dumpster truck or garbage truck can move in there. Uh, they will have to do some backing up. Um, I we don't anticipate a lot of uh, large truck traffic with the the proposed use. Um, that being said, we 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 I, we don't know who the future tenant will be, right. uh, so there is that possibility. I know that uh, on. Um some plans over the many years we've we've had sites that are very tight and and we've talked about as a condition that uh, that those kinds of vehicle tra you know the tra um, dumpster traffic or if you're getting oil delivery and things of like that be done um, outside of normal business hours um, but if you can demonstrate to me that it works fine then I'm fine with that too just just an idea I wonder if the fire engine, I mean, the experts will be able to, I mean, you could probably just still go out that way, Route 1, not have a formal cut, but, you know, they still go out at the You know, the to thought occurred to me right here. Yeah. I, I mean, there's not going to be a guardrail there. Or anything. For, for what it's worth, when staff started to look at this new design, that was one of our first thoughts as well as we got we had need to talk to our our friends at the fire department and so I did have an opportunity to speak with our commercial code fire inspector and he said uh, you know understanding the size of the building that's going to be I believe it's a sprinkled building if I remember correct. correct he was comfortable with being able to pull in front of the building and given that it's sort of a limited uh, it's not that big of a building that they could back then that you know once they're done doing it, that they could back make their three-point turn and come back out onto route one so um, he obviously hasn't seen details of a design, but at least conceptually, before we put it on, put it as a staff recommendation, the applicant spends a lot of time thinking about it. We wanted to be sure it was at least a viable option from all departments. And so, um, again, there's devils in the details, but right. at least conceptually, we're there's a curb design, Cape Cod, that they can go out over sure. from internally. There's that as well. I yep. can certainly go over. Yeah. And my final comment might be just that the sign location will change with this newest. Absolutely. Well. Uh, most likely mm, somewhere in this corner. Yeah. And uh, low as opposed to high, monument as opposed to pole. Uh, but that's it. Thank you very much. I think you've uh, come a long way, and uh, I appreciate the, re, uh, the reuse of that area, the reuse of that building, and look forward to uh, your next visit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can I? Sorry, I always do this, but when I go first. Um, does this property, I'm trying to picture it in my mind, does it dip down off Route 1? Mm -hmm. Not as much as Dunkin' Donuts does, does it? It's not going to be, a, because Dunkin' Donuts is a problem not only because of the queuing, but because it's queuing and it dips down, you know? This, I don't think we're going to have a queuing problem because we're not going to have any drive through but there are going to be people coming in and going out at the same time, and I just want to make sure that the grade isn't going to be an issue. <laughs> I, I don't believe it's as okay. an aggressive a uh, hill as we never uh, asked that question Donuts. before, so I've learned to ask that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you no, know, regarding the uh, the unknown tenant, um, 
whoever goes in there will, will realize how many parking spaces they have. And if they need more parking spaces, they just won't go there. Go there. You know? That's kind of how we feel. Yeah. Yeah. With regards to the signage, can I make one comment? I don't. You have some sheets. We provided those, and I just heard some comments that signage be low and that's it. not oh. what we're showing. So. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Am I skipping? I don't mean to speak out of turn. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I do see that now. Thank you. That's to me. That's wonderful. That's lovely. Um, I looked at it quick, and I I, I saw it as a sign you have on the building. But I'm seeing that right here. Not to speak to you, Mike, but I think when you, when you say low, you're talking about not a big pole. Not a pole sorry, mounted. Not I just uh, it's just oh, my yeah. personal. Okay. You know. I know they're allowed, but okay. you know. Right. I, I remember one uh, one conversation fondly with Maine Bank, uh, no uh, Bangor Savings, and they were they were proposing a pole mounted sign, and Sue might remember. I do. And um, and they ended up putting the sign that is there today, and I mean just so much more inviting to me. Plus a pole mounted sign in many ways, I think it misses the, an individual's ability to to view it really effectively. I mean, you gotta you know move your head and trees and. Whatever. This is great. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Sure. If it's on L102, is, is that's correct. Right? If if he's going to move the sign down to the by your entryway, then you're going to have this monument sign there. That could be blocking the view, couldn't it? The entrance and the exit. How tall is it? I mean, that looks. It would be set. It would be set back far enough that it wouldn't it wouldn't be hitting your sight lines as you come out. <coughs> You'd be down here somewhere. We are turning the vehicle be out here, and it wouldn't. We, we can locate it, and I'll check and make sure that on a field assessment that it's not part of it's not blocking your exit yeah. exit view coming. I mean, I, I agree. The monument signs are nicer, but if it's going to block, you know, your your vision. Because of its location, then. Yeah, I think that's probably the second comment I've heard that maybe it's worth having the traffic engineer take a look at. One has to do with the, the throat coming off Route 1 in that first parking space. Do we have enough queuing length there? And then this other question about being sure wherever this sign ultimately gets located on the next set that we are providing adequate sight distance. So um, I think that's, those are good points for the applicant to take a look at as they prepare for another round. Okay. Uh, so I, I also favor the, the single curb cut alternative, and I agree that, um, again, as we talked about, it's a highly constrained site, and we have to kind of prioritize, and it seems clear to me that eliminating a curb cut uh, is more important than um, having a few more feet of, of buffering, as long as it's executed the right way. It also um, gets the snow storage out of the the, the stream buffer area, and um, I think again, you know, we're we're talking about a repurposed property here, and and I think um, that'll be a, a significant net improvement just in terms of the the site site layout and movement. Not even not even getting to the to the architecture yet. Um, also appreciate the the approach on uh, handling stormwater um, and sort of respecting that that stream resource back there. Um, in terms of the architecture, um, I think it, it's definitely an improvement from the first um, stab that we saw. Um, you know, I, like Mr. Wood, I, I, uh, I think it is important to, to, to keep in mind, and I'm not suggesting that Susan isn't, I think, you know, you started off saying this, you know, you're <coughs> thrilled about this, and I think, um, so I don't think any of us are looking for a, you know, a, a salt box or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, and I think it has moved uh, in a good direction. Um, and I'll sort of look forward to seeing um, what you can come up with to maybe tweak things a little bit within reason, knowing that you do have a flat roof and you have that existing box that's there now. Um, and one comment I'll make, um, it's sort of a minor thing, but I'm generally not much of a fan of uh, canvas 
um, canopies. They mm -hmm. seem to they tend to fade and tear over time. Um, and I'm not I don't want to suggest that I I would insist on something a lot more expensive or something like that, or that I'm going to try and design the, the building by any means. But that's just a personal thing for me in terms of things that you know, how how well it will stand the test of time and just sort of a, a just a my two cents on that, I guess. Um, but beyond that, I think there have been some good comments about the about the site design, and um, we'll we'll see how that all develops in terms of the, the fire access and everything else that's been mentioned. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing the next iteration. Is there anything more that you need from us at this point in order to move toward final? I don't think so, no. Okay. We've got a couple things definitely to tweak, and uh, hopefully you'll have our packet on Friday or Monday. Okay. Well, thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> As mentioned, items 11 and 12 were tabled. So we're on to the pl town planner's report. Uh, yep, I guess the only item I'd like to remind board members of tonight is that we have a host of plans to sign. I think there's going to be at least six plan sheets to sign. So um, just keep that in mind after the meeting. Um, that's all I have at this moment. All right. Administ administrative amendment report. Yep, uh, one item to report. Um, the freestanding sign on lot seven. Um, they proposed a to relocate the freestanding sign. Um, board members may recall the freestanding sign was to sort of be in the middle of the site. There's a you're talking about Gallery Place. Gallery, I'm sorry, yes, okay. on Gallery Boulevard, the new right. building that's going in there, um, and they proposed to locate it. Uh, there's an entrance just across from Texas Roadhouse. It's a shared driveway with uh, um, Walmart and this site. Um, and they're finding that as they're out on site that this is probably going to be their primary mm -hmm. entrance. Um, the detailing is going to be the same as the Walmart <coughs> sign that's out there. Um, obviously, it's going to have different names on it, but outside of that, the detailing's the same. So uh, reviewed that with the board chair, and um, that was administratively approved. Thank you. Any planning board correspondence? We already referenced the email we had regard to the cell tower. Planning board comments. I just have one real quick. Uh, and I'm only going to have like four more meetings so I'll get my voice in now. Regarding the proposed amendment to zoning we did before, and I mentioned it before, I had one question. The facility would not create unhealthy or offensive odors. So what's the process if there's a violation? So actually I've got it right here. You have the violation process? So the, fi the fine, I think long-range planning and staff and maybe council needs to take a look at uh, section 4C and just look at that. Basically, any firm corporation being the owner having control of the use of the building structure violates provision, da da that would be fined no less than $100, no more than $2,500. How do you determine how offensive that odor is, and where do you determine the fine level? It's it's yeah. just a devil in the detail, and that's I don't need to go okay. anymore. I think we need to look at that. Yep. We don't need a major issue. We got a big stake, and well, you guys said, well, I'm going to fine you 2,500, and they sue the town because they think it's too too much money. Just a little devil in the detail. And that's it. No more to say. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll just make a quick comment. Um, as I think everyone knows by now, On the Vine has opened down at Dunstan, and um, I've been in there, and I, it's, I think, what everyone hoped it would be, and mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a great development for, for that end of town. Um, in terms of pl the planning board business, they will be coming in front of us at some point. I don't know if they're on the calendar yet. Um, the, the prior chair uh, of this board had had given them administrative approval because they were they were just reusing an existing uh, building and um, when they went to file for their certificate of occupancy it turned out there were some areas where they had deviated from that administrative approval uh, including uh, you I'm sure have sensed Jane's sensitivity to uh, 
uh, HVAC and, and restaurant venting and, and things like that. Um, so there were some, some, some things along those lines that sort of need to be cleaned up. Um, the solution from the town's perspective was to secure a performance bond in the amount uh, that's intended to be equivalent to the value of whatever improvements might be needed to uh, ultimately comply with what was approved. But um, it was agreed that um, that was going well beyond uh, any further administrative approvals. So <coughs> coming in front of us, I think they, they wanted to come in front of us and kind of explain how that all unfolded. And we can determine at that point how we feel about where things stand. But uh, that's just something to look forward to. I guess this will be a few months. Um, they do have performance guarantees typically for one year. Sure. They've just opened up their business. So, you know, I think we'll probably see them once they get into a bit of a groove. But um, Right. And another good example of a repurposed building. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all excited that they're there. We just have to sort of clean that up. So, that I could. Go ahead. You know, I'm trying to bite my tongue a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I'm trying, uh, and try, 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 I may. Um, as it relates to self towers, I have a I have a fundamental issue with what we just experienced tonight, and I, I think it needs to be said. And I don't know if there's a remedy. I don't know if it's worth a discussion. I don't know if it's worth a meeting. But he, here's the problem: it, we just had an applicant say we can't be responsible for anything beyond our 100 by 100 foot lot. However. Their impact, their project impacts much a uh, far, far greater extent than the hundred by hundred lease that they hold, mm -hmm. and it goes back to the ordinance. And I feel like th there needs to be some hashing out of how that twenty-five acres plays into the five acres that plays into their hundred by hundred foot lease. Th I have no clear answer in my mind as to how they should all interrelate because there has to be there has to be some relationship from their project that they propose towards us being able to remedy impacts that they will have on the people around them and that i think is the real I mean, you guys have watched me i mean watched me really struggle with cell phone tower proposals and that's the crux of it how do you hold somebody accountable when they can sit there and claim I only own a thousand square feet, but their impact is actually seen two miles away, and and that's going to be a continual struggle, I think, based on the way the the ordinance is currently constructed. So I, like I said, I don't even know if I'm I'm making um, a bunch of sense to you guys, or if I'm just kind of hmm. needed to vent, but. <clears throat> it, it's it's a constant battle for me, and I don't know what makes it better. I don't know if it's a meeting um, to, with with staff and this board to kind of, or the town attorney, just to go over how those all interrelate and how it relates to how we need to do our job. I really struggle with it, and I, you know, I, I just wanted to put that <coughs> there for food for thought. I think you know, I think we we initially struggled right out of the gate with the mm -hmm. sort of the priority of location. Mm -hmm. methodology and I think we ultimately got some good direction and feedback from staff and, and town attorney on that and so whatever the venue is um, you yeah, know that may be maybe worth pursuing offline. Oh, done that three times sure. tonight. It's not a bad idea when these things come up I mean that's what, what member um, planning board member comments are for and re make this comment, refer it back to the ordinance committee. I mean, we're, we're the ones who implement these ordinances, and if we come up with issues in the ordinances that don't work for us, then the ordinance committee is the place to go, or in this case, long-range planning committee. You know, it's the same thing, basically. And I think that that's something that Jay has written down, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. And the next time we, we have uh, an opportunity, we can take a look at it. Thank you. I'd like valid. to follow follow up on that because Thanks. I think what Sue is happening hit, hits the nail on the head from my perspective, and that is that what we're doing is following what has been handed to us by the ordinance committee, and if if all of the details fit within the ordinance that we have, then we can't go beyond that. But I think we can go back to the ordinance committee and say, wait a minute, this is this is not clear. Uh, like you said, the ramifications of 
only a small square go way beyond that square, and maybe we ought to do something about that. I concur with that 100%. But I think as, as it currently is written and handed to us, we're limited. And, and, and um, I can tell you from having family ownership of woodland that uh, ownership of land has been tested in the courts, you, and you can't just arbitrarily tell somebody what they can do if they own the land, what they can or cannot do with it. I mean, sure, there are there limitations. So I think that you, you, Nick, hit it right on the head. At least you, you opened up, I think, to a great idea that maybe we ought to discuss what we are comfortable with and what we feel <coughs> is really, really push, pushing us into a corner and come up with some ideas or recommendations or suggestions to go back to the Ordinance Committee to clean that up. I concur with that 100%. Thanks. Anything else, Roger? Yeah, um, I don't think this is a very unusual um, su uh, rec suggestion on Nick's part because this is kind of a, this is a, we're new to this. And uh, I think the people who came up with this ordinance really struggled to come up with what they thought was a good good ordinance. But it's, I, I don't think it's very, uh, I don't think it's uncommon to find, once we get into this whole process, to find some some areas where we have to address it. So, um, and and I, I'm sure we're not the only community in the whole country that's that's dealing with this. So, other we could probably learn something from some other communities as to how they're dealing with this. this and in uh, that vein, I think part of what makes the dynamic challenging at times is that we're we're sort of feeling our way through some of this with a newly minted ordinance, and we're we're dealing with very sophisticated applicants. Very. Who know who have done this in many many communities and sometimes presume to talk sort of lecture us about how our ordinance works and what what's really intended, and so I think that just makes it all the more important to make sure that we have our ducks in a row and we understand how much discretion we have and um, understand make sure that we're that the ordinance is achieving what it really was intended to. So. I, I think they were also very, very keenly aware of the visual aspects of these towers, where, wherever they place them. You know, that seems to be the number one yep. issue. And uh, only complaint. So, right. one more comment on that. Um, perhaps it would be a good thing for us to have a workshop around our experience now that we've worked with this ordinance for a bit. Where do we see problems? Is it that we don't understand it all that well? Is it that there's something actually that conflicts? I don't really know it that well myself, except to know that now we need to know more than we do, maybe. Agreed. But that's just a suggestion. I agree with that. Thanks. Anyone else? No? I'll move to adjourn. Six. Favor? Thank you. Far for one leave. Angela Blanchett was.